And the stock market just continues to hurt. Okay. Hello, folks. John, good to see you. Hey, thanks, man. Did good we give you. him his potion? Oh, oh, so to see him. Look at that. So it's basically it's the dice that you would roll for uh, healing potion. Oh, that's so smart! Uh, greater healing potion. So that can just take two of the highest roll, right? If I'm... <laughs> that's from Jim. Oh, then you can take, them, take two out. Oh, well, that's such a cool idea. Did you make these or did you find them like on Etsy or something? Nope, I made them. Oh, they're so cool. That's a cute little gift. Thank you so much. I love that. Uh, that box. That's for Eric. For Eric. But he said he was going to come tonight, right? Did he? Well, he told me he was going to come tonight. Oh. Like, well, he on Sunday. Me. But then, I don't know, with his girls, it's always like... He didn't that. That's what, that's what he, he said. Cool make it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get started in a second. I'm just running a little bit behind tonight. You know, I never knew that uh, D&D Beyond had an app. Whoa. <laughs> really? Yeah, I downloaded it earlier to this day. I'm like, if I forget my page, to put out my page, which I completely did, make sure I have this as a backup. <laughs> and I was trying to get everything out of the house, and I'm like, I have to feed my dog, and to try to take my dog out. I'm just like, oh. I'm so scatterbrained when I have to leave. You could have brought Kingston with you. I thought with two dogs here, uh, well, they get along fine with other dogs, but maybe the fact that Loki's here also. I didn't know that Loki was going to be here. You're okay to bring him if it's, if it's just Bob. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, usually I would have brought him, but he's good just like, he's fine just being left at home. It's fine. Okay. He can he can take some time away from me. I can take some time away from him. Now connected to David's fire. Can you? I don't know if it was supposed to be a surprise for me, but can you text Eric and see if he's coming? I don't think it was supposed to be a surprise, but yeah, we'll see if he's coming. Is Jess not going to be here? I thought she was. Yeah, she needs to be here. It's all it's her, it's her people. Yeah, I was going to say. We should make all the decisions for her people. <laughs> Plus, Kevin's going to get in trouble a lot today until he learns. He's not going to learn, so he's going to get in a lot of trouble. How things going at our bottom? Going good. Very busy. That's right. yeah, yeah. Very busy. This is good. Oh, yeah. You, how's your new position? Yeah, I like it. Yeah? Yeah, automation's cool. Just dealing with tickets and coding and... Stuff like that. Now I'm doing like printer support. Oh, yeah. Guy, yeah, there's a guy at Pleasant Prairie. He's going to Germany for a month, so I'm going to be backing him up. Are you using Chat AI? Uh, Chat GPT? No, not yet. Are you sure? Yeah. Just, it's, it's, what, what are you coding in? Oh, uh, it's, it's a Sea Burger. It's like Java. Oh. Yeah. yeah, so Chat GPT, write me a script in Sea Burger that does X, X. Does X and X. And it'll go, burn it! Yeah. Literally will like save you from like having to do any real work. I mean, you still have to like check it, make sure it works. Um, yeah, that's job security for somebody else. <laughs> but then you know it gets the the bases done. Cause I don't know how to code, but when I have to write now anything in Java or anything, just like a quick script, um, I use that. And it's it's that's actually really cool. really yeah it works really well. Yeah, gets you ninety percent of the way there, and then that's uh, time well spent. Yeah. Hey, are you playing away? Okay, uh, we're in chat. All right, bye. Also, let me show you this real quick. Hello. He says you still have to shower, maybe, haha. Okay. 
Why am I playing Frozen still? Why are you playing Frozen still? basically Animal Crossing, but in Final Fantasy XIV. It's pretty great. Jimmy can finally unlock it! Woo! What were the rings that you brought? Oh, so, yeah, do you know what your ring size is? No. Let's start you off with a 10. Do you want silver or black? Yes. Black. Silver! <laughs> okay. Well, this should be black here, unless all the black are taken. There's one black 9. Uh, yeah. Silver. What is this, a 10? It's a T20. No, but yeah, size. Size. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's got a little. Yeah, I think it was a black uh, eleven, which is what you're probably gonna get. Uh, I mean, yeah, technically in bulk, but it wasn't really in bulk. They were single orders. Oh, okay. Thanks, John. Yeah, yeah. You're very welcome. Uh, ten appears to be my size. Yeah. Although. Yeah. It doesn't spin all the way. Yeah. So you kind of, so there's a little arrow that kind of points to where it should land. Yeah, and then. Kind of like, apparently gets faster. Yeah, because like, like this, the one that I've had, spinning it over time kind of smoothed the track out a little bit. I had no clue you had one. Yeah. I had two, but the other one was shitty. Well, it depends on what finger I put it on. If I put it on my ring finger, well, I can make people think of Mary. Yeah, because you just want to make sure you're not putting it on so that your finger turns red you black when you do that. Slightly larger? Yeah. Yeah, black 11 right here, right? Because yeah. I could put that like right here or something. So I made this in OpenAI today. For the Breath of the Wild launch. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Just a picture. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, uh, super fun. Somebody's messaging us. Super fun. Yeah, I don't know. Who is it? <laughs> Jess, do you know your ring size? Uh, Can't hear you. Good question. Uh, depends on which finger, and... Uh, your, your, your left ring finger? I dig it. Thank you. <laughs> no, uh, whatever finger you would roll, uh, wear, like, a, a D20, yeah, a D20 <laughs> dice. That's a hell of a oh, sorry. Give me. So, so there's, a, there's a ring, and it spins a D20, and uh -huh. I'm gonna send you one, I'm gonna send everyone one, uh, that's not, doesn't live here. Um, Ooh. I just figure out which so it doesn't matter what finger you pick, but I'll tell you the available sizes left. I got okay. the small size is nine. Oh well, that's no! Not, is that that's too big? Not, that's way too big. Okay, well, well then I'm gonna then I'm gonna order another one. Don't even worry Aww. about it. Just, just tell me what ring size you are. I could wear it around my neck. No, no, no. Just tell, <laughs> tell me what ring size you are, and I'll order it. Okay, like right um, now. Okay, you're lucky. I've got one of these. Oh, I have one of those too! <laughs> thank you, John. Let's see. Um, while you guys are figuring that out, I just want to say thank you for all of you who pitched in to get me this awesome DM screen that's in front of us. So cool. And it's got these really cool initiative trackers with everybody's name and their combat symbol on it. It's so. present day today, didn't you know? Yeah, I love what, it. What'd you get me? Thank you. Not dying today? Uh, no, no promises. I might have g given you the gift of making a new character. Oh, the gift of creativity. Yeah. I love it. That's the best uh, gift there is. Yeah, this is awesome. I think I'm gonna try to get two more to extend it on the sides, just so I have a little bit more room with these, but I love it. Thank you, everybody. That was very kind of you. All right, we can go ahead and get started before Poe falls asleep listening to this and then realizes he has to go check his island. <laughs> this one, too. Okay. And would you prefer it in silver or black, Jess? Um... I do like silver, but black would be good too. Okay. Yeah. Almost all my other rings are silver, so black will be a nice change. And it goes down to six. So if that helps. It's the lowest it goes. I can try to find if there's some some other I'm not sure, but yeah. Just tell me what size your your ring is. Your... <laughs>
Let's see if I can find something that fits a six. I'll look to see if they have it available. I don't think they have it available. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see, what happened last week? Nothing eventful, right? Nothing. Kenji, you weren't here last week, right? Yeah, so nothing eventful did happen for me. Right. So, um, after finding out that there appears to be a civil war of sorts going on in the Asm Steppe, uh, Sherbin went into a fugue state and ran out of the uh, castle, determined to swim her way to the Asm Steppe if she had to. Um, she had some sense squeezed into her by John, who, or I'm sorry, by Kevin, who uh, wouldn't let her go, and by Sid, who tried to use his words um, and calming emotions. And together, uh, they were able to uh, convince Sherbin to calm down and take. Uh, everybody got falcons that they were able to rent from uh, Doma and use that to fly to the Asm Steppe. When you got there, uh, you got a kind of a wide angle view of what's going on. Um, I don't know if people saw, if you want to take a second to watch it if you haven't while we're playing, but in the Journals and Videos channel, I posted two videos, one of which was what Doma, uh, Doma Castle Town looks like. I did a run through of that. And then I also did a flying tour of the Asm Step, so you have in your head what's going on. Um, not sure if everybody saw those or not, but uh, just trying to be helpful. If there's other things that you do want to see that you haven't had a chance to yet during the campaign, let me know, and I will go make video of that as well. The inside of the Leviathan? Um, can we get inside? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm thinking, is there anything that would be like that? And I can't think of anything. Um, but, uh... Poe actually posted the Twain Farm. Did you see that? No, I haven't seen that yet. That's it, awesome. It's in the video, uh, the uh, Discord under the journals and videos. Oh, so I'll take a look. Look. I just haven't been on the Discord. So the Twain Farm and a lot of cliffside, um, including the eponymous cliffside, uh, with no railing. <laughs> because, of course not. Um, and then uh, we also had Sherbin, who went around and took some pictures in... Um, in Kurthus, uh, the western Kurthus Highlands, where you guys all uh, encounter the cannibal zombies um, and some big monsters and stuff in the snow. So that was really cool. I'm, I'm loving that people are taking the initiative to do that kind of thing. Um, I know that we have some more planned, uh, but no spoilers just yet. Uh, but if there's anything that you want to see, let me know. Um, so, you got to the Asm Step um, with Harry taking charge. Who was that? Thank you! Sense 5? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Alex, that I had it on my ring finger. Um. Oh, so you will marry me. Woo! Hey guys, we're getting married! I'm an officiant. Well, that'd be perfect! Are you gonna be jealous, though? Yes. It's okay. Well. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Harry took charge, uh, a, a noticeably sober Harry, strangely. Um, he seems to have sworn off his drink for the time being. Um, and uh, he put his private ear skills to use in flying about the Asm Step ahead of everybody else. Um, it almost got up close and personal with one of the aforementioned primals that are affecting the step. For those who are not initiated, the primals um, are like the Leviathan that you fought. I think everybody was here for that, right? Everybody was around for the Leviathan. Nobody joined after that, right? I think so. Okay. So you understand what a primal is, essentially. It is a being created by the faith and ether of its followers. Uh, the Asm Step is currently under assault by three of them at once. Uh, so that's Titan, Tritok, and Quetzalcoatl. And they're all fighting each other. The cause of this is not really well known, except for something that happened during the yearly uh, Nadam, which is a game that the tribes of the quest uh, of the Asm Step play to determine who will lead the uh, lead the Asm Step for the next year until the next Nadam. Um, something happened, 
and some of the tribes summoned their uh, their primals, representative primals, and there's been a lot of death and otherwise bloodshed since then. Um, you watched Naruto, right? Naruto? Yeah. I've never seen Naruto. I've never seen a single episode. Okay, never mind then. Yeah. The watch Tap and Titan. Yeah, it's, it's kind of so like every single village has their tailed beasts and like oh. they can. Yeah, it, 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 like, it sounds like it's you. like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it sounds like it's like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you saw some people getting eaten by like Titan and some of the other primals, and that was not meant to be an attack on Titan reference, but I guess it works. Um, and eventually, you landed at the lip of a cave. Um, that Sherbin had identified as a safety hiding spot for her tribe that she had learned about when she was younger. And inside the cave, you found that a good number of her tribe were there, including all of Sherbin's family, somehow. Uh, and that's where we left off. Did I miss anything? I don't think I missed anything. No. Okay. No, you did miss something. Yeah. Sherbin violently assaulted the group. Two of you. Two people in the group, yeah. not just for funsies, okay? <laughs> no. And she hasn't apologized either. Um, okay, with that, we'll get started at the Asm step. And I think the music doesn't have to be super ominous because people are alive. <laughs> Okay, sorry, let me pull up something. It's gonna be one of those nights where it's just either too cold or too hot, isn't it? No, it's I'm fine right now. At my place. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, moving the session over to Will's place. Yep, see you there in a minute, guys. None of you know where I live. Yes, I do. Dude, I've stalked you for like forever. I mean, yeah, I, by the way, why'd you throw out that uh, that 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 piece of uh, that shirt? I thought it was really cute on you. Uh, I yeah. was getting holes in the middle. Well, one man's uh, trash is another man's treasure. And they're right. Crop tops are familiar. so in. They're so <laughs> in. I gotta bring them back. <laughs> Where the fuck is it? Okay, so so far you've only seen Shangis, right? Sherbin? Who? I of thought your family? all of them were there. I thought they were all there. Three husbands and three kids. Okay, so you did yeah. see the other two husbands. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Well, I, I knew I, I knew Shangis was there. He was the one who's missing his arm, but um, I, I couldn't recall if I had shown you. Which arm is he missing? His left arm. Why? I want to go in for a hinge. <laughs> You can. Just go. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I know. It should be right to right. So that's more fun. Kevin, okay, left hand. Um, okay. Right. My starbird, it is wonderful to see you hail and hearty. Oh, my sweet darling. I'm so sorry that I wasn't here for you. I'm so sorry. I... I'll never be able to give, forgive myself. What? What's no, happened? No, no, Stati. You have a life to live outside of this step. We understand this. Do not feel bad. No, I, I should have been here. I should have been here. And oh, hold on. Let me, let me try to help. Can I, can I cast a, um, a healing spell to help stop the bleeding on his arm? You said the wound was fresh. Uh, it's, it wouldn't, it's not exactly fresh, but you do see blood on the bandage. Okay. At the very yeah. least, let, let me change your bandage. This is going oh, to be course. terribly, terribly infected if we don't do something about this. Okay. Um, he, um, he unwraps what's left of his arm. Like, it's not entirely missing. It's not, like, cleanly sheared off at the shoulder. There's a bit of it with some bones sticking out still, but like the skin and muscle ripped off of it, um, oh, like gosh. right about here. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, yes, I hate it. Not exactly sure what caused it um, from looking at it, but uh, yeah, it's not it's not in great shape. Uh, it does not appear to be infected. It appears to have been well treated already by your tribe, um, but it's not fully healed or anywhere near it. So 
Out of character, it sounds pretty sloppy to me. <laughs> if it still has the bones sticking out. Ugh. Uh, yeah, not exactly. I know what you're referring to. No, it's not like that. Okay. <laughs> Good. So, I assume we're kind of still all kind of grouped up, except Sherman's a little bit off. Just look a little forward. Can, I, I'm looking around now. What do we? What do I see? Okay. You see? What was that? Yeah, Sorry, whistle. Whistle. Like Disneyland whistle. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get quiet there? Yeah, of course. Um. So looking around, it's a larger area than you would have expected from the outside. The very center of it seems to be um, a not not a natural structure, but something that has been built into the rocks. Uh, those of you who've seen the video, you would have recognized this as the large purple thing that was in the middle. This uh, has already been identified to the group as an Allegan structure. Allegans being a race from thousands of years ago, um, and they've left their mark all over the world. Um, the purpose of it is not clear, just that it thrums with etheric energy. Um, and this is at the very center of the cave. Built around it and into the walls beside it are cubbies and places for uh, people to sleep um, or just take shelter in general. You see there's, there's well over 100 people here um, and they all appear to be dressed in the same style as Sherman and her family. Um, and just about everybody seems to be looking. A great number of them seem to be fine, like in, in perfect health. There are also a lot that uh, have been injured. Um, not sure how many uh, have died from her tribe. That's not immediately evident. But there are that appear to be really badly injured, and then some that are just slightly injured. Uh, 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 Sherwin, is your family okay? Well, for the, for the most part... Oh, I've got a cough drop accent. For the most part... It looks okay. like I have to I have to change Chingiz's uh, bandages. He, he seems to have lost the norm. Right, uh, yeah. I mean, that looks painful, but good on you. Fighting the good fight. Fighting the good fight. I mean, uh, hey, uh, uh, sure, like, everyone's looking at us weird. Could you, uh, like, uh, <clears throat> like, introduce us? I'm a little busy. No, I mean, like, after you do the thing with, with the arm thing. So, one that's been identified as Octai, one of her husbands, walks up and just kind of, do not worry about the others. You're welcome here. Yeah. I don't know, like, we were coming in, and someone was trying to, like, stab us, uh, shoot arrows or something. If you look at yourselves, and then look at us, you'll see that you don't exactly look the same as us. Ah, uh, good point, good point. I just felt, you know, if we were, it's, you know, I, I feel like if Sherwin came to my family, like, you know, we wouldn't be pointing sticks at her, and I was hoping we'd get the same. But I get it, you know, the big monster guys out there. There's, there yeah, are there's... monsters and there are also other warring tribes that we are trying to protect from. We could not be certain that you were not part of that. No, I hope you understand. No, 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 no. I mean, I do the same thing for me. And they, you know, I'll ask for a little fallout shelter. You guys have done a pretty good job. Thank you. Yeah. It is humble, but we like it. It is home. So who's the king around here? We've been a lot of kings and royalty. This draws a laugh from literally everybody. Li the entire cave echoes with laughter. I'm I come with the energy. <laughs> so you're already making friends, KT. Oh, we're laughing at you. The Zoom won't be joking. Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, anyway, hey, uh, yeah, like I was saying, you're king? Can we, can we see you? My friend, what is your name? Oh, uh, Kevin, Kevin Twain, nice to meet you. Kevin, uh, he, he bows his head to you, not like, not like he did, not like at the waist, but just kind of like a head bow. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you may call me Octai. Uh, okay, Octai. I'm sort of in second husband. Oh, second husband? Well, one of them, the second that you've met. Second that I've met. Wait, how many husbands she have again? How many do you have now, my darling? <laughs> Eight. Eight, eight, right. Nothing for my religion. In fact, I think it's kind of weird. But, you know, if you guys are making it work, uh, I mean, the old tale like turns, making babies, or, like, how does that work? Ah, well, I would love to give you the, uh, 
inner workings of our love life. I'm afraid my lovely wife might murder me. <laughs> not wait until I murder the dresser. I know how she can be, you know, like kind of pump elbows, not like I'm getting it. Do not do oh, that. Uh, that is rude. Do not disrespect uh, my wife. I, I apologize. I apologize. I, apologize. Apologies, sir. It's just, it's a little weird, right? In my religion, you know, it's usually one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, you know, I'm still getting used to it, but I will say, uh, show one's been nothing but great so far. So if there's only two of you, then how do you have the time to get any work done whatsoever? Well, I, you know, mostly I'm out in the farm you know, doing things that, you know, men do. And, uh, and my wife... Uh, so you change diapers and litter <laughs> and sewing. <laughs> You handle cooking. What is funny? Uh, I was, you know, when you guys said, never mind. Uh, no, uh, she handles the cooking, you know, the cleaning, uh, the, the taking of the kids. I, I handle the beatings. You know, if a kid needs a beating because they're acting up, that's me. Uh, you know, uh, she makes sure the house is tidy. Uh, you know, and I do all the protected. I mean, look at me. Uh, you know, protector. Speaking of. Right. Uh, uh, Sherwin, if you didn't know, uh, actually hired us to protect her. So, uh... It's starting to make more sense why she would bring you here now. And I have to say, uh, you know, we've all taken a liking to her, and I feel like she's taken a liking to our group as well. I'm sure. Well, uh, to answer your question that you answered, you asked very loudly. Right. We do not have a king. We are what is known as a matriarchal society. It works much better. Uh, I look over at the professor, like, what is that word? <laughs> our, it, uh... our khan, which means leader, is Udira, over there. Hey, that's your leader? Yes. So did the, the king die, and so, like, you haven't filled the spot yet? We have no kings, no queens, just the khan. All right, so you're a leaderless society. I'm getting no, it now. Uh, no, no. Mm. Okay, who's her husband? Or husbands? Oh, she has many. Where are they? Let me see. Uh, oh. Oh, my goodness. Uh, sorry, it is still fresh. Four of her husbands were murdered. Oh. oh uh, Two of the others are elsewhere in this step at the moment. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm so super sorry about that. She can't. She's like a distance away. Oh, wow. I feel so, that's awful. I mean, I couldn't imagine, uh, you know, losing my only wife, but if I have more than one wife, I mean, that'd just be, that'd just be the worst. Would yes. it be possible for us to get an audience with the Han? Uh, of, of course, but uh, why? Well, I'm a little worried about your status if the other tribes are fighting for the power vacuum right now. I want to get a grip on what's going on with this situation, see if we can't help protect you folk. Well, I'd be happy to answer questions if you have them. If not I, then perhaps Turgen over here can make himself useful. Right, Turgen? Yes, yes, I can be fine. I'll, I'll be useful. Uh, this is another one that's been identified as Sherman's husband. Oh, the younger one. Um, but if, if you wish to speak with, uh, with, uh, with Udira, then I... Yes, I, I'm sure I can set up a meeting. It's very easy. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, now I'm coming up here. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. What, what were you got to say? No, 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 it's okay. Go ahead. Uh, You're good. Well, what information do you have on the situation? What tribes have been hit the hardest? What's well, first of all, which three summoned? Summoned, uh, uh, you know. Primals. Yeah. All right. Uh, perhaps take a seat, and I can enlighten you to the story. Well, uh, before you get into that, um, if we're going to be setting up here for a little bit, I'd be happy to help out the injured if you want to set me up with a place to work. Oh, uh, well, that family was recently killed. You could stay in their hovel. Sure, I guess. You uh, literally get to one just like like three three alcoves down from where you are right now, and there's still stuff scattered there that looks like it might have belonged to people, but otherwise empty. Is there somebody who can help funnel the injured toward there, and I'll get to work? 
I will have Turgon do so. Excellent. And yeah, that's something that I can do. Head that way. And now that I'm thinking about it, we should probably bring the birds in. Don't want to draw attention to this position. Birds? Yeah, what we rode here in on. Oh! I did not realize that you brought birds. Uh, we do have perches outside, and they're relatively well hidden. Fair enough. You'd only be able to see them from, from the air, so if you feel like that might be too dangerous, or something might see them, we can probably bring them inside, but I find birds tend to be loud and smelly. Well, there is a, a flying primal is the only thing I worry about. I don't think they're after the birds. Say. I don't know. I appreciate it. I gotta be honest. I will bring this up to uh, uh, to Dira and see what she says. Very well. Uh, by the way, who's writing this week? Uh, normally it'd be me, but I am not able to. So if somebody else wants to take that. Any volunteers? Show for a second week. As Will <laughs> escapes. <laughs> well, that right anyway. uh, no, so did anyone want to volunteer? Uh, I can do it if nobody else wants to. Okay. I'd love yeah. to, I just don't think I'm going to have the time to do it. Oh, sorry guys, I would have, but I got up right there and didn't hear what we were talking about. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that for me would be Christian. Christian. Okay. Anyways. If you don't mind, then we'll have Jimmy do it next week maybe. And then back in... Denver. Next week's canceled, right? Oh, uh, the next time we meet. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, uh, what, what, where were we? Uh, Sid's going to get set up in a hall hall. Yes. And you're going to tell a story to the people sitting down. Yes, okay, so everybody sits down. Um, at this point, uh, Shervin's kids have come around, and they have um, trays of, uh, of drink, some kind of drink in a cup. It looks to be a warm drink, um, and they're offering it to everybody. Oh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank kindly. I smell it. Uh, it's an earthy smell. It's not bad. Kind of reminds you of your papotos, or at least farming. Cool. Let's drink. Okay. Um, it is a tea made from a root that is found out here. Um, it's uh, it's refreshing, but it's very tangy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. What was that? Like ginger. Like ginger. Kind of like a ginger. That's kind of what I had in mind. Yeah. Um, do the kids look like like they've been through it this week? Um, yeah. Her kids are eight, six, and three. Um, the eldest one, Adgrel, um, he he looks like he's trying to be older than he is, and the other kids kind of just look like kids. So they, like they don't, don't seem like they're ahead what's going on. If they do, they're not showing it outwardly. Great. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, so, now that you all have a drink, I will let you know what happens. <sighs> Are you familiar with our tradition of the Dan Shignadam? Kevin Shignadam said yes. <laughs> is there anyone who doesn't know what that is? I, I went over it briefly, but if you missed the well, session... I I do, but Kevin's doesn't. Okay, so seeing the thing, <laughs> you have kind of a blank stare. Once a year, an event will happen in the step where a beam of light will fly into the ground somewhere among this massive area of the step. And um, from the air, you can see the Asin step is massive. It's the largest single region that you've been in, or that you can see throughout. Um, the tribes will then fight to see who can get there first, dig up the seed of light from the ground, and claim it. And whoever is able to do so, their tribe will rule over the Azim Steppe from the Dawn Throne for the coming year, until it happens again. Oh, well, that's what the king was talking about! I look over... King? Uh, at a DX since the professor's not there. Oh, Crooked Hand, yes. Yeah! Crooked Hand. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, definitely familiar with that. Yes. And, and you, uh, you guys are part of that? 
Every tribe sends representatives to participate in the dog shit that dumb. But it's supposed to be friendly, not, isn't it? No. There's many deaths during this competition. It is a fighting competition. If somebody else is approaching and you want to stop them, you fight them. You are able to kill them and there will be no repercussions. Wow, sounds awesome. And purge. Perhaps next year you can compete for your tribe. Uh, my tribe's not really here. I mean, maybe. Yes, we are. Well, I mean, what? am I part of your tribe now? Is that how that works? Through association? You associate with Sherman. Therefore, you are part of our tribe. Does that mean I gotta marry her too? Because that's really no. not part of my religion. Uh, I don't think you have the horns to do so. It, it, good point. I, I don't have horns. Um, hey, me neither. Out of character. Yeah. Out of character. Um, Sherbin had established early on that they don't take people into their tribe that are not originally from their tribe. That's why she couldn't be together with Sid in the way that he wanted to. My bad. Okay. Uh, oh, right. I thought that you couldn't marry someone who wasn't from your tribe. I didn't realize that you couldn't adopt people into the tribe. But that makes sense. Uh, so, you didn't say that. Yeah. You can still fight on our behalf. I mean, I, I, I might. I, it's, it sounds like fun. Come back in a year. I mean, yeah, if we can solve the whole thing with our like city getting released from the, the beholder, I, I, I just might. That is a lot of words that I do not understand our meaning. Yeah, I get that feeling a lot. Anyway, during the Nadam, the winner was a tribe who was never won before, and it caused a bit of controversy. Are you familiar with the tribes of the Steppe? <laughs> sure, Ben. My love. Should I explain? Please do, but go very slowly. He, he looks at Sherbin and he looks at Kevin. I understand. <laughs> the Kestir are one of the tribes of the steppe. There are many tribes in the steppe. Well over nearly a hundred? There are many of us. It is a very large area. The Kestir are an interesting tribe. They do not speak because they believe words are tantamount to lies. Every word that comes through your mouth is a lie. Hey, Bill, that's just like you! And I kind of pat Millie up on the back. <laughs> she does not look Kastir. No, but she can't speak neither. Ah. Well, the Kastir are sometimes known to remove the vocal cords of children so that they cannot be tempted to speak, even if they wanted. I mean, sometimes I feel like I want to do that with my children, too, but... I, mean, I think that sometimes that's just going above and beyond what you need to be doing. My friend, that is barbaric. Uh, I, mean, uh, yes. I will not cast judgment on your religion. Right? And I'm not going to cast judgment out loud on your religion either. Sure. <laughs> the Kestir were the ones to successfully grab... <laughs> That's fucked up, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the vocal cord thing? Yep. <laughs> yes, it is very fucked up. Uh, the Kestir were the ones to grab the seed of light, therefore, they rightfully would be the ones to lead us for a year. However, do you see the problem here? No, not really. Oh, they can't talk. So, how are you gonna lead someone if you can't talk? Can people not read either? That is very astute. That is exactly the the complaint that was made, is that if they are unable to, or unwilling to speak, then how can they lead? I mean, can't, can't they write? Uh, they do not write. They only use gestures and body language. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be kind of annoying, but at the end of the day, this is something you all signed up for, no? Yes. We were not ones to protest them leading us. However... However, are you familiar with the Buduga? I can see by the way you're nodding your head that you are not. <laughs> uh, the Buduga are a particularly violent tribe among us. Now, we do not shy away from violence. This is part of life. But the Buduga, they embrace it wholeheartedly. They do not allow women in their tribe. The only way that they are able to replenish their ranks are by kidnapping 
males from other tribes and indoctrinating them in their ways. That's awful! It is. As you may imagine, this could lead their numbers to dwindle and has led them to make an unfortunately very strong alliance with the Oranir. The Oranir believe themselves to be descendants of Azim and the ones that actually belong in this step. But the two of them together make a very strong presence. The Baduga, while the, while the Ormir are usually calm and composed, a particular Baduga, their Khan, drew some ire of the case deer. Uh, One second. Sorry. One second, please. <laughs> Dix, let's know all this. Yeah. Okay, because not from my. Uh, I can't remember all the tribe names and this uh, Babadook guy, a tribe. I, <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Uh, but they all sound awful. I mean. Get being pissed off a lot. You know, being having a lead, having a tribe lead you that you know aren't good leaders. I mean, I wouldn't know what that's like, but uh, I can imagine, right? I can imagine. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, they all swore an oath and uh, they're not playing by the rules. Right, you gotta follow the rules. You gotta follow the rules. My apologies, my mind drifted. Yep, mine does that a lot, actually. I believe. <laughs> what does it say? The whole tribe like me is crazy. Kiss dealers, huh? Uh, no. That's what I thought I heard. <laughs> I was like, that is an interesting tribe name. <laughs> so the, the Khan of the Buduga died to cool. He drew ire from the case he, he argued with them. He declared that they should not be allowed to rule. And this, at the end of the Naden, while everyone was gathered, it was very controversial for him to do this. Uh, no one was happy. Even his Oromir allies were unhappy. And uh, when it seemed to be dying down, one of the Kestir made a very obscenely rude gesture towards him. Uh, this was this was Itergen, the Khan of the Kestir. So, Daidukul rushed him with his axe and chopped off his head. Wait, he killed Turkman? Of the tribe that couldn't speak. The tribe that could not speak. Right. The, Kest, uh, the Kestir, their Khan is uh, Itergen. Daiduku, the Khan of the Budugu, cut off his head. At which point, Magni, the leader of the Oranir, stepped in and cut off <laughs> and cut off the head of Eturgen. I'm sorry. I think I, I mixed that up. Daidukul attacked I said Daidukul attacked Eturgen, right? The Khan of the Castle. Yeah, he cut yeah. off his head. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So then, um, did I get myself completely confused here? Hold on. Didacool attacked the Turgen. Mm -hmm. Ew! Ew, you! <laughs> oh my. A new yeah. guy killed. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I was the ordinary guy's name was what? Magni. Magni. How are you? M A G N A I. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has. How's life? Sorry. Yeah. How's life for you? Busy. Yeah, yeah. All right. So then what did he do? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so then uh, some of the Kestir then rushed the Badugu and Magni, <laughs> being their ally, stepped in front of Daizakul and he fought off and had to attack and injure many of the Kestir. He's a powerful warrior, kind of a brat but a powerful warrior. Uh, unfortunately, next was a bit of a blur in the speed of which it happened. The Kestir, in their anguish from this, uh, called forth the Primal Titan. 
and Titan. Hey, which one was that one? The rock one? It looks like a giant rock. God, yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that terror guy. I, I mean, yeah, we saw that thing, Titan. It is this. Titan crushed Magni under its tremendous foot. The Oranir's leader is now dead. So the remaining Oranir, in a moment of passion and rage, summoned their uh, patron primal, Tritok. Understandable. Yeah. Tritok and... Wait, which one is Tritok? The many-colored bird. Oh, yep, yep. That one's kind of scary, too. Which yeah, was the one that was fighting initially, right? Which one is that? the one that doesn't speak? The case theater. Q-E-S-T-I-R. Um, and the other one, they're trying... The O-R-O... N I R. That was the one. That was Magni. They're allied with the Boudou guy. I, I think Boudou they're guy. just. I think they're just trolling them because their primal is try to talk. Try talk. Oh my goodness. I hate everything. Hey, is that why they can't speak? Because they they're trying to talk. They try to talk and they fail. So anyway, try talk and Titan fight each other, and the power of their attacks causes many more casualties on both sides, but not just the Baduga, the Kestir, and the Oranir. All of the tribes were gathered for the Nida, which means many of them were also catching strays, as I've heard said. <laughs> One of which was the Dothar. And while the Dothar do not necessarily care if their people are killed, it's part of their religion, they did dislike the fact that the Oranir were being attacked by someone other than them. Sadhu of the of the Dotharl declared that she would be the one to kill Magna of the Orin. And since somebody else did it, Sadhu directed her people to summon their prime. <laughs> <laughs> and they summoned Ketikato. From that moment... I, I, I know, there's lots of names too. I, I don't get all the names either. From that moment, the three primals have been locked in combat. This was three weeks ago. Sorry, it was a Sadu's group, some of the third? Yes. Uh, wait, uh, what? so Magni died? Magni was crushed. He was stepped on by Titan. He did not survive. So, I mean, this is crazy. I mean, I mean, clearly there's wrong people and right people in this situation, but everyone's kind of wrong sometimes, and everyone's kind of right. I mean, how how do we get everyone just to stop fighting? Say that again. What? How do we get everyone just to stop fighting? You know, uh, it's just leading to more deaths. Well, you it's just give them a Pepsi. <laughs> Walk up to the Pepsi. <laughs> what we know of summoning, what we've learned of summoning, which is something we do not do often. Once the ether used to summon it has been used up, the primals should go away on their own. But as I mentioned, it's been three weeks, and they are all still fighting. Oh. We, if, as my understanding is, no, you can't. They would go away on their own once they no longer have ether to draw from. So. We're very confused on why this is. But, Udira has a theory. Wait, which one's Udira? Oh, that's, that's your uh, queen. Cunt. Your cunt. Got it. That is not a word that we take kindly to here. Uh, that's, did I pronounce it wrong? Yes, take it back now before we cut off your head. I take it back. I just Thank I thought I said it right. Very astute of you. What was your name? Oh, uh, that's Millie. She can answer for herself. Yeah, you, mean, uh, you know, sometimes it's best to let the men talk, I, I think. Especially in these top of ten situations. I completely disagree with you, my nope. chauvinistic mm. friend. Uh, look at Professor, realize he's not there. <laughs> look back at DX. Seems near enough that he can hear uh, Oh, this is, it's Yeah, but he's kind of treating, he's kinda treating he, the wounded. He's like, you're a driver. We need Kevin. to make Kevin a pocket... <laughs> 
dictionary. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah, I mean... For what? Pocket picture, like like a pocket dictionary with pictures. Oh. So he can... I get it, I get it. You know, uh, you know, I wouldn't want someone to drive me around if, if I want to drive. I makes a lot of sense. <laughs> He said, chauffeur. Yeah, he said chauffeur. <laughs> okay. Lubira figured it out, just much like Millie did just now, Mila, here. Uh, the Azim step is rich with ambient ether, and it seems that these primals are draining the ether from the land itself, not just from those who sunk it. And that is why they have not yet gone away, and our belief is that they won't, until there's no more ether left for them to avoid. Now, I, I thought ether was important. What happens if, like, all the ether's gone? Does it, like, restore itself? It does not, at least not right away. If all the ether is drawn from this land, then this land and everyone upon it will die. Uh, so well, then what's the plan? I mean, clearly we got to either stop the primals or stop them from sucking the ether, because we don't want all the ether gone, right? That would be ideal, yes. And the, does your uh, leader have a plan for that? We do not. We are not militaristic tribe. We we do not feel equipped to be able to handle the situation. At least not alone. If we could band together with other tribes, perhaps. But I believe, my personal belief is that they must be defeated in order to disperse their ether. Uh, yes, there is actually an area known as uh, it's. I believe uh, your people call it the burn. It's a place of sick insults. <laughs> it is to the west of here, some distance. Does anyone else have questions on what happened here? No, uh, I mean, I think you've been pretty uh, thorough. Uh, I mean, I don't know all the names. I know, uh, you know, we don't like the Babadooks, and, uh, but everyone's kind of a little wrong, and the people who can't talk, I'll that's call them the Millies. That's right. <laughs> many, many years ago. The Millie tribe. The Millie tribe, you know, they should be the ones ruling. Um, but... You guys know? You guys are like super like staticky on our end. So you might want to like turn off the mic and like reseat it and then go in again. It might just be John is loud. Maybe is I'm it, just is it everybody or is it just you? It's just like a pretty constant sort of like low buzz. It's like a constant sort of low buzz. Yeah. Oh god. Unplug it and plug it back in. Ready? How about now? How about now? Still there. Yeah, yeah, it's just Melinda using the stove. Did it just start like two minutes ago? They couldn't hear. Yeah. Oh, that's that must be it. Uh, two minutes yeah, ago. Stop. Stop. Oh, oh, it's just oh, the stove. You guys got the No, it, it's fine. Is it uh, back? It's Melinda using the stove. She's frying her dinner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's I was just. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a mic thing. Okay. Yeah. No. I think we're good. It's fine. Once you. It'll be normal. All right. So, uh, first off, we're sworn uh, to protect Sherwin. And I gave my Who oath. Sherwin. Sherwin, you're your wife. I do not have a wife named Sherwin. I have a wife named Sherbin. Yeah, that's what I said. No, Sherwin. It was, not. it was not what you said. Well, uh, pretty sure I said it right. I'm pretty sure you did not say it. I just agree, disagree. I'm a sworn to protect her, your wife, until we bring back an aid and uh, some other things uh, based on the town we came in. Uh, and also, you know, she's sort of like family to me now. And I don't want to see her getting hurt. So, uh, although this is a, a business decision, I'll have to talk to the group. I think we probably want to help. Well, we would certainly not turn down help, but if you are not at the, the task, then we do not want you, want you go to your death. Hey, hey, you know, wait, we were to kill a primal before. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we could kill three primals. I mean, we probably could if we separated them, but all I'm saying is, we're here to help. 
the while Kevin and Octai are still discussing stuff. That was, uh, that was, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. So Sherbin, uh, she's got little Octai curled up in her lap and she turns to Millie and says, Millie, that is a very good idea. I think we should bring it up to the Hun if we get the chance to see her. Hey, what's a good, what's a good idea? Uh, it's merely written to lead the primals to the desert so they dry up. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, Millie had a wonderful idea um, to somehow yeah. lead the primals out of the step into the desert, the burn, and let them dry up that way. Wait, so uh, if they're not around in the ether, if they're in like the desert, and they would go away? There's nothing to draw from? Primals are purely ether. If there is no ether for them to draw, draw from, they would die. All right, all right. And how does one get a primal to follow you? That is a good question. Hmm. DX, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking that we need to find some sort of ether that's really large that would attract them. Like some, maybe some of these elegant structures. Maybe figure a way. Maybe we can like transport that mm. and follow it out there. Do you guys have uh, one of those uh, stones? Is like uh, you can like touch it and like kind of like, and then you can like transport back and forth from the you know with the big thing. Kind of looks. Yeah. There are three etherites in the mountain step. Well, don't those hold a lot of ether? They do. Do you think if we gathered all three of them, uh, that'd be enough to like convince a primal to follow you? I do not think you'd be able to move one of them with a long three. Well, is there another way to like, put a bunch of ether into like a single place? I do not have this answer for you. Mm, mm. Yeah, I think about it. You know what? Uh, I'm just glad you're all right. Uh, well, thank you. Knowing that you, a complete stranger, is worried about our well-being warms my heart. Uh, you know, if, uh, like I say, uh, Sherwin's family and, uh, you know, you're her family and Box Station, that kind of makes us family. But, you know, I don't want to, like, you know, uh, nothing weird. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, you know, that's it. I mean, uh, never mind. All I'm, all I'm trying to say is, uh, you know, uh, we're here to help. You want to use your leader as bait? I mean, I am the strongest in the group. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is your group. I will not tell you not to do this. Right, right, right. But I mean, even though I'm the strongest, uh, I don't know if I have much e ether, ether in me. It kind of suck up ether? Is that something I can do? I don't think you should. No? Yeah, you, you, get, you get sick? You think you get ether so, sick? Uh, maybe maybe doing it the wrong way, you might, I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean, we've sucked up a lot of things together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you feel, you, I guess you feel on the right way to suck something. Uh, can you either get hurt? Can the other person get hurt? I wouldn't want that to happen. Yeah. Sherbin, my love, is he doing this on purpose? Yes and no, darling. I'm sorry. No, it is very amusing. I just want to make sure I'm not misunderstanding. So, sucking up the ether is not part of the deal. I guess we'll just have to talk to some people. I'm not saying you're not the most knowledgeable here, but maybe I'm there's not someone that's the knowledgeable here. I'm a lowly male. I best. mean, Sherbin kind of uh, <laughs> talks low, but loud enough for Octai to hear. Sometimes we just let them go <laughs> on because it's, it's hilarious sometimes, but. Once in a while, he does have some really good gems to share. You guys have your own language, right? Like, you speak uh, outside of common. No. Oh, okay. Uh, they speak common here. They just it's, speak common. it's just different act. Uh, dialect. 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 Okay. Yeah, Ishgardians speak Elizabeth, which is... Yeah. Elizabeth. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. I mean, technically, they probably also speak, uh, like, like our language, but for the most part, the tribes of the steppe all speak common so that they can understand each other. So, uh, if we had to get a bunch of tribes together, like, who are you allied with? Like, who do you think would join us? I cannot think of any tribes that would not join us at this point. I believe that the tribes that summon the primals themselves wish for them to go away at this point. Yeah. In these situations, I, you know, what I do in, in, in my family is I call family meeting. Can't you call, like, a, a tribal leader meeting? Well... 
is possible. It is something that we can do from the Dawn Throne. There is a big concern, though. Three of them, in fact. Oh! So you can only call a meeting from that throne? That has... The throne has the ability to notify all of the tribes. But... It is also central to the Asmin Steppe, and it is elevated above the ground floor of the Steppe. There's not too many places to hide there from the primals should they decide to attack. Not to mention, it has the largest etherite in the Asmin Steppe, which may draw their attention. Um, Oktai? Oktai, yes. darling, do, do you know how many people have been enthralled by the primals? I don't know if anyone has been enthralled. Many have been consumed. Really? That's probably worse. That's peculiar. Yes. Uh, I do not know of anybody willingly following the primals. They just seem to be running from them. That is so peculiar. I've never heard of behavior like that from a primal. The easy was shocking enough, but to not enthrall anyone? No, I agree! That brings up a good point! So if everyone's got these primal things, there has to be a way to control them, no? Like, convince them to walk away? Like, you tell, you know, what? like a pet! Let me ask you. You are a farmer, yes? Yeah, yeah, I'm a farmer. On your farm, do you ever have to, uh, light fires? Light fires? I mean, yeah, I mean, we light a hearth every, every night, and, uh, you know, sometimes when we're getting rid of, like, last season's crops, the stuff you didn't eat, was, uh, yeah, you burn that stuff. Right. Do you start this fire? Yeah, yeah, of course. Do you control it once you started it? I mean, uh, no. I can not control fire. Think of that the way you think of primals. Got it. Got it. So we just need some water to put them out. Or like the... <laughs> well, I'm super proud of myself yeah. for coming up with that. No, great. Like, no, 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 what I meant to say is we need... Hot water, whatever sure puts out ether. Like... Whatever puts out ether. Do you have... What puts out ether? Do you have a... Violence. Anti-ether? I don't know what this word means. Violence. You kill the primals, their ether disperses. Alright, well, you could just kill the primals then. It's very simple, yes. Yeah. Well, like I said, we've already killed one. Uh, I just don't think we could take on three at the same time. Was the one that you fought? How strong was it? Full strength? I mean, I don't know. Uh, it had been summoned uh, recently and uh, came out of the ocean. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I, I kind of just fought it. I had a lot of damage, but uh, at the end of the day, you know, we killed it. Well, it is quite an accomplishment to do so. Most people never see a primal in their life, let alone the one that you fought and killed. And now the three that are on the Asm step. However, I will say, I am ignorant to how these work. I, the only reason I know what's going on is because I saw it firsthand. I was there. Hmm. However, I've been thinking about it. These primals have been consuming the Asm step's energy, its ether, for three weeks now. What do you think that does to their power, to their strength? Yeah, probably makes them super slow because they're full. You know, after I eat a big meal, I, I just kind of want to sit around. We can get them when they're napping. The depth Perfect of your idea, intellect. DX. The All depth right. of your intellect is truly really marvelous. Oh, I appreciate that. How many of the three that are under five Yes, it seems to be. Have you ever heard of the game Boulder Parchment Shears? Not anything like uh, Slappy Facey? Whatever that is, I, I highly doubt it. Mm. Uh, it is a game in which Boulder can defeat Shears, but Parchment defeats Boulder for some inane reason. Shears defeats Parchment, but Boulder defeats Shears. You oh, see what I'm saying? Here? We, we call that paper, rock, scissors. That's very good. Okay. Um, the primals have been fighting each other. One hurts one. When it retreats, another hurts the one that hit, hurt it. Mm. When it retreats, the one that was previously hurt comes back healed after it's absorbed more ether. They've been clashing like this. Running away when they get hurt, coming back when they get stronger. Mm -hmm. Maybe we just target the weak one when it runs away. 
Where do they usually run when they run away? We don't know. They run, they consume the tribe, some tribes, and some ether, then they return. Alright, so we got two solid plans that we need to figure out. One, we kill one of the weak ones when they run away. And then we kill the next weak one once it's about to run away. And then we kill the one that won. It's still weak, but that's a lot of killing of primals. Not that I don't want to kill primals, but I remember almost dying when we killed the last one. Uh, even though no one went down, but it's close. Number two, we take them over to the desert and somehow leave them away. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, well, maybe, oh, maybe we take them to the desert, and then when one tries to run away, the weak one is still weaker, and then we kill it there. Either way, I think we solved your primal issue. We just gotta figure out one, how to get them to the desert, or two, where the weak ones go. Uh, not to interrupt, but do you guys hear the hissing anymore? Nope. Great. I am very tired. I'm going to lay down to rest. If you need anything, put up to speak to someone else. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry about it. All right, well, uh, thanks so much. Um, what, what time is it? You've been kind of like up all day. It's getting starting to get you, uh, you flew through the... Now I'm confusing myself. You met with Hian early in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You flew here and it took you most of the day. Mm. So it's nighttime. It's roughly nighttime. Like you were arriving here when it was getting close to sunset. That's when you saw Kitsukawa flying by. So now it would be evening. Is there like an, an inn we can stay at uh, while we all stay here? Hey, what? Like, you know, like uh, you know, a place where. Oh, that's right. This is your fallout shelter. Do you have like. Shelter? <sighs> Is there, like, a place we could all st stay and sleep and relax? And he points, and there's, like, there's, there's, um, it looks like nicely homemade woven sleeping bags, essentially, and rocks where you can lay your head. Oh, perfect. And also, uh, where's your bathroom? Outside. Anywhere you want the outside. See? I'm not the only one that poops wherever they want. <laughs> you should bury it once you're done, though. Dig a hole. No one ever tells you gotta dig a hole. That makes a lot of sense. If you're using, if you're using some of the foliage, in order to wipe yourself. Right, right, right. Which you should do. Yeah, I wipe, I wipe, I wipe. I'm, I'm not a. Make sure you stick away from the the plants that have the blueberries on them. Trust me. All right, all right. No blueberry plant. Got it. Um, Kenji, Kenji's gonna take out a golden gill and do like sleight of hand magic for Sherbin's kids. <laughs> They're Aww. looking at you like, <gasps> like just wide eyed. How'd you do that? A magician okay. never reveals his tricks. I, can you cast spells? No. Oh, oh dang! I revealed a trick. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Let me show you a trick. And um, this is this is Odgarel, the eldest one. And he's looking at you, and he just kind of does this with his hands. And you don't really notice anything happening. But anyone else who's looking does. Kenji's floating, like levitating three feet off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Ken, where'd you get rocket boots? What is that? And it, like he turns to you, what's that? And he puts up his hands and Kenji, you just fall, fall on your ass. <laughs> oh, leg it. Oh, I'm sorry, mister. Take some getting used to you. Oh, yeah. oh. Sure, when were you going to introduce us to your uh, your kids? I guess the rest of your family? Oh, of course. I'm sorry. Um, sorry Even for my manners. Are we all there? No, oh, come on. No. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin hasn't shit in your bucket, okay? In a long really, time. you did not read the side journal that <laughs> Millie wrote specifically looking for poison ivy or equivalent plants. <laughs> well, actually, I love it. It's a great plan. <laughs> I'm sorry, were you going to introduce you to your family? I'd love to meet your kids. Right. Uh, of course, of course. You're, you're um, <laughs> oh, no. 
this is uh, this little uh, little show off in front of you is uh, Art Garal. And uh, this uh, is Taban. And uh, this little darling here in my lap is uh, Oktai. He looks up name... at Sherbin and, and he's like sucking on his finger. He looks at Sherbin and then he looks at the group and he just does <laughs> like a raspberry. <laughs> no. Hey, precious, Sherwin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. She just cuddles Octa even closer and just like kisses the top of his head. And uh, this is uh, this is my first husband, Chingis. And she motions to Chingis, who's a little bit of a dis at a distance, resting with his arm uh, or shoulder crossed. He's what? Pleasure to meet all of you. I'm sorry about your arm. It would, it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm back, back. I highly doubt that. Yes. Uh, Shengiz is uh, one of the senior hunters of the tribe. And uh, Oktai here, who's been kind enough to let us know what's been going on, is uh, one of the village guards, which is why we were one of the first people, or he was one of the first people that we met uh, at the entrance. Oh, okay. Uh, and then Turgin here, uh, he's my third husband, and he is a uh, junior hunter working underneath uh, Shengis. Wait, junior hunter? But he's the oldest? No, absolutely not. Why not the oldest, do you? Oh, oh, I don't know. Uh, all you people kind of look like. I have no. seen 22 rotations around the sun. Oh, yay! We, we, do we do that? No, we don't. No, we have the eyeball. Uh, it's like, uh, okay. You know, I've had. I would know my age, but I'm trying to. I've had 187 uh, odd eyeballs looking down at me. Uh, Turgid is just very disturbing, uh, like, he's got a disturbed look on his face and he glances at Sherbin like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, well, I hope many more eyeballs rain down on you. Oh, uh, thank you, and, and you with the sun thing. Right, yes, I, I hope I have more rotations around the sun, for sure. I mean... Isn't the sun the thing moving around? That no, doesn't matter. Let's not get into it. We move around the sun, not the other way around. No, pretty sure the sun. I've seen it. It goes like this, right? It goes up and down, right? You're very simple, aren't you? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, and uh, any other husbands? Did you say you had six? I have eight husbands, but only three eight. of them are here. Where are the other ones? Uh, they're in uh, different locations uh, around the star. I just want you to know, um, Jess, uh, Teamer is going to be an avid triple triad player because Teamer is the name of a combination of colors in Magic the Gathering. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just decided that. <laughs> well, very nice to meet you. Uh, your, your mom and, and wife has definitely gotten me out of some tricky situations. Definitely kept me from dying at least a few times. She's very good then. Right, right, she is. And, uh, you know, honestly, we didn't really know many people when we got here. Uh, didn't know anything about this world. But uh, uh, since we've had her, she's really helped us understand how things work. Has she been teaching you how to think? Well, no, what? <laughs> that's not really a woman's job. But, um, we all know she definitely taught us all about the world and, and how things work around here. And uh, I don't think we could have gone as far without her. Well, I'm glad we agree. Oh, thank you, Kevin. That was pretty kind of you. Eh, yeah, nothing but the truth. Oh, that's the EX. Uh, no, introduce yourself. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I'm Deus. I'm a... Who is this? I'm a mechanic. Okay. Also my best friend. What is a mechanic? Oh, oh, uh, I, I work on, um, like, like, mechanical things, like, uh, wagons and... Guns and like a shot 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 gun. Ah, it's uh, he turns and spits on the floor. That's uh, I will leave that to you. 
Well, thank you. It's my. Wait. And boy, is she a good mechanic. I'm sure she's very good at what she does. She really knows how to grease the wheels, keep everything moved up for you. Okay, this has to be on purpose, Sherman. I kind of look at you. What was that? I said this has to be on purpose. Yes, Sherman. Yes and no. It's it's all natural. That's all I can say. It's all natural. Yeah. This this girl over here, her name's Millie. She's the youngest of our group. Millie is Kestir. Or not as in step Kestir. Boy the world Kestir. Interesting. Yeah, but she's a great dancer. Uh, just like the ex, but a wonderful dancers they have to show you sometime. I would love to see. I do have a question. Millie? Milla? Which one is it? Somebody can just tell me. Millie! Alright, Millie. Why is it that you choose to remove your vocal cords? I see scars. I don't to talk about that. Why? I, I don't think it was on purpose and she wasn't going to move it on. And... My sincere apologies. I hope you are able to find your vocal cords somewhere. I'm sure they could be reattached. Uh, that one over there? It's that's like the Futurama scene where Fry goes down an alley and guys like, hey, want a new larynx or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that one over there, that's Ken. Uh, he's really good with uh, like a, a wimpy sword. You know? Uh, really impressive. Wimpy sword? You know, the small ones. You know, uh, what do they call them? Uh, uh, Sam, uh, Sam, Sam, Sam Rise. Sam Rise swords. May I see this? I want to see my blade, friend. If that is not in, if that is inappropriate question, I retract it. Oh, it's all oh, right. Come on, okay. it's a bit odd. And I show me blade. my blade. Okay. Um. This. This is a beautiful weapon. Thank you. Hi, Audrey. <laughs> Hi, Hallie. Oh. <laughs> right, and then uh, over there, the person that's been helping people out, that's the professor. See it? See. One of the smartest people in our group. He seems very intelligent and quiet. Hey, hey, hey professor, come over here. Hey, introduce yourself. Also, I hear you something like a, like a, like a horse. Oh, oh like a... Shoot. What, what did we write? Uh, like a chocobo. What does this mean? Hey, no, I'm just saying he's very How well... Bird anatomy that? makes that not a compliment <laughs> at all. <laughs> Are you implying that he has a very large penis? But, I mean, I didn't say anything, but uh, yeah, probably does. Uh, I hear he's going with it, too. I was... <laughs> <laughs> You brought me over here to talk about that while I was helping people? No, no, sorry, sorry. I just brought you over here to introduce yourself. We're just introducing people. Uh, it is fine. A pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, Sherbin reaches up with her hand to give uh, Sid's hand a quick heart squeeze. Uh, this, is, this is noticed by your husband. Good. That's it. Uh, that one over there? Head back. <laughs> oh. Hey, are you sure? I, I'm just making an introduction. Uh, uh, people I'm, sure will, I, I, I'm very happy to talk later. People need some help. He's usually very social. Hi. 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 <laughs> what are you doing? Running away. Why are you running away? Why, why are you running away? It's the appropriate reaction. Going to bed. Going to bedtime. Sid okay. is a very, he's a very dedicated man, and his heart is always in the right place, and he does everything he can to help those that need it. In fact, he was, he was our teacher, uh, taught all of us, actually, he did a great job. <laughs> he seems very intelligent. Teaching is generally a woman's job. They're, they're very much more intelligent than us men. I, the, the, that one there, uh, kind of new to our group, uh, his name's Sol. Hello. 
He's not in his seat. Right oh, now. oh, sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh, I think Eric just went way too far. Eric's there. Oh, and can't. Ta oh, uh, 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 Toby. Tabby. Toby, is that one there? <laughs> Hello, Toby. Oh, and the one with the uh, the giant owl. Uh, yeah, he's. I mean, my name is Harry. He, he, he'll kind of get you down, you know, uh, sometimes. But he means nothing but good. Yes, good. You know, yesterday, many yesterdays ago, I had dreams of good futures. Those were dashed upon the rocks. Yeah, that, that, that's, uh, that's, that's our group. Oh, uh, that's, that's his, his bird's name, uh, Cabby Dog. <laughs> that is an interesting name for a bird. It does not look like any bird I know. Yeah. So on the sly, Millie shows that to Audrell and hands him three rock candy six. Okay, they they all are like looking to see if Sherbin's watching, and when they're satisfied that she isn't, they reach for it and they grab it and they kind of just stick it in their mouth. The one, uh, the youngest is not trying to hide it at all. It's just kind of like, well, she gave him to the eldest to distribute as he uh, yeah, sees fit. That's what he did. Yeah, and then Millie's gonna run off to go find a blueberry bush. Oh my Sherman would definitely notice um, if he's trying to give any of the rock candy to the littlest one because he's in her lap. That's a good point. All right, so he gave three to Odd Gorilla, and Odd Gorilla will give them out. Yeah, I mean, if, if Odd Gorilla wants to give one to the baby, that's between. But Odd Gorilla immediately two. starts eating his. Excellent. Uh, I mean, not that I'm going to say, but it's it's been a real long day, and uh, I think we could all use a little rest. So go rest. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No one's stopping you. Oh, by those rocks, right? Whatever you see an open spot, you may use. All right, all right. Hey, well, thank you kindly, and uh, thank you for taking care of my wife. And maybe you could. Uh, you're welcome. You always have to take care of someone special. Uh, and if you could set up uh, the meeting with the leader, maybe we can talk to her tomorrow morning and uh, try to work a plan out on how we can fix this primal issue. Yes, of course. That very much appreciated. The is everyone going to bed, or does anyone else have things they want to do? This is me asking his DM, but in using his voice. Yeah, I'm going to do other stuff too, but, uh, oh, uh, which one of these hovels is the bathhouse? Do what? The bathhouse. We do not have bath in here. What? There's, if you climb down, there are rivers. There's also a lake next to Gondrum. You can <laughs> bathe in those. It may be cold. Nice. Yeah, you see, my ears kind of like wilt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what just Millie says to everyone and then walks off to go find. You don't have to announce this. <laughs> If people are going to go to bed, then um, I'm going to help Sid a while before I join you. No, well, not to go to bed, per se, but, you know, just start winding down from the... I mean, we've been... I had a headache for, like, over half the day, and, uh, you know, we're flying for the rest of the day, and, uh, you know, I just think we, we want to be our best. If we're going to figure out what to do about this primal situation tomorrow. You all realize that Millie told us she needed to use the bathroom, which means she's clearly up to no good, right? <laughs> Everyone Speaking aware, of, right? I have... Does this mean something else where you're from? Use the bathroom. No, I told her there's no bath. <laughs> what happened? Uh, so if anyone's looking for me, that's a natural 20 for a 29 stealth check. Nope, not looking for you. The DM wow. didn't even see you. And when anyone trying has disadvantage, I'll get attempt because Elven kind quote. Even the DM? Especially the DM. <laughs> oh, uh, Sherman, um, here, here, you, you, you should take these. I'm going to reach into my pack and pull out a saw and a file, and I'll hand them to Sherman. And I'll say, uh, 
you know, next time you bandage that wound, you might want to use those, just in case, so. Good thing, DX. Uh, uh, all right. Um, thank you. Uh, and and uh, here, here are your goggles um, that you let me use oh. earlier. Thank you very much for those. They were a, a huge help for me. Thank you. No, well, thank you. I appreciate you returning them to me. You seem like you're good right now, right, right Sherwin? You don't seem as angry. No. No, I'm I'm doing much better, Kevin. Thank hey, you for asking. Much Glad better. to hear. Glad to hear you're back to your normal self. Well, I might want to go check on... Uh, might want to go check on the professor. He's been acting kind of weird since we got here. Yes, he's very... He's very tense. Um, that's, that's my intention. Uh, uh, right away I'm going to see how he's doing and also help him a bit uh, with aiding the people. Well, you know how my wife always released t my attention? She left me alone in the toilet for at least an hour. Man, was I feeling good afterwards. <laughs> Lighter, too. Very light. Anywho. I'm gonna go ahead over there. Yes, we'll <laughs> think <laughs> you guys come over whenever you're ready. So I've been kind of like driving the whole conversation, trying to get out okay. away from it all. You're not, you're not often here, so. And Sherbin to herself, just like, oh, I hope he thinks a very big hole. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> all right, what's everyone doing? Okay, so I'm gonna find a place where I can do some crafting, and I'm gonna work on Soul's armor, and then the new lift. And when Millie comes back, I'll wave her over and see if she wants to help me get it done quicker. Kevin's actually going to go range. We just have a portable shower set up, though, that we had made out of that still. Yeah, but we don't have access to water, though, right? Mm. City can make water sometimes. They also do have water here. It's just not, like, running water. It's like they keep it in pots and things like that. Uh, Kevin's going to go, like, set up, like, how he would for, like, a thing over at night, but, like, in the cave. Okay. Um, when they realize that you're about to make a good amount of noise with what you're doing, they direct you to an area that's kind of secluded, that where the noise won't travel nearly as much. Oh, okay, good. Privacy is conducive to getting the work done. So you're on one of the lower levels, um, kind of close to some of the elegant machinery that's there, uh, but uh, it's you're well below the rest of the group. Yeah. Are the blueberry plants plentiful? There are many plants around here. Um, go ahead and do a nature check. Tw uh, 13. Okay. Um, it takes some looking, but after a little while, like 10 minutes of searching, you do spot one that seems to match the description. And it's got wide leaves, kind of like, like this. Like to that point, um, some kind of like like hair on it. It's hard to hard to discern exactly what it is, but it's like you have to look real close and you can see them standing up. It's kind of like if you looked at, at like at, the leaves that look like fuzzy. Yes, but it doesn't really look fuzzy unless you get close to it. Um, and it surely enough, it has some blue colored berries. Not like blueberries, not like the fruit, but there are blue looking berries around there. Um, Leaves of three? I don't know what that means. So, so, so the, the, the adage is leaves of three, let them be. Leaves of four, let more. So poison ivy, so I'm out. That just has no enough. bearing on this. So. Okay, well, Millie will put on some gloves and, and cut off a few leaves and a few berries and just put them in a sack for later use. Okay. Glad you said you put on gloves. <laughs> <laughs> and then she'll head back and eventually reconvene with Deus to tinker and stuff. Okay. Um, Sol, you were you had gotten up a minute, but was there anything that you wanted to do? Like, I, I think they were um, introducing everybody and then asking what they're going to do for the night. I think I was on mute when I said it, but I was I was going to follow Sid and help him with like healing and tending to wounds of the people. Cool. Yeah, we didn't hear you say that, so yeah, it must have been. Um, okay. So you're with Sid. So Deus, you're going to Tinker. Millie is going to meet with Deus. Kevin's trying to fall asleep. No, just setting up camp. Setting up camp. Okay. Tavi has not said what they're doing yet. Um, I don't know if he's there or not. Yes, he's not. Gets to bed, I think. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think okay. can you? Uh, I'm gonna probably go uh, looking around at the locals and see if there's anywhere to drink or if there's a group together drinking. Just trying to okay. integrate myself in their society. Um, there are. There's one group. It's like a circle of um, the four of the men. <laughs> Barely touched them. It's a circle of four men, and they appear to be the only ones that are consuming what appears to be alcohol. Um, all of them look like they're taking battle damage. What? Got it. Okay. One of them is missing. One is missing a horn on the right side of his head. Um, two of them have bandaged wounds around their chest. Uh, another one seems to be missing the lower half of his leg, of his uh, left leg. Uh, I think I'll go up to them and be like, hey, missing a horn ain't the worst thing. <laughs> Try like, lighten the mood. Do you take off your hat and show them, or...? Oh, yeah, yeah, guys, I gotta go. I'll catch you later. Bye! Thanks, Bye. Bye. Damn, hope everything's okay. Let's say that there was a mouse under the fridge that Arya was trying to get at. I missed that. I wonder if you got it. When did he say that? Just a few minutes ago. Oh, in the chat? Yeah. Yeah. Discord. Okay. Tavi will go drink with Kenji and the dudes. My man! It's a band, Kenji and the dudes. Yeah. <laughs> they all play a single string on a guitar. Uh, <laughs> Collectively. <yeah. laughs> um, I thought so. Right, cool. That's just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you waited until Alex left because he loathes ska music. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I mean, love Scott, and he's wrong. Yeah, same. <laughs> same. Okay. Um, well, uh, Sid and Sherbin then. Uh, Sherbin's going to pass the baby off to Octai, and then uh, take her leave to go uh, to Sid in the tent where he's helping people. Okay. Just running back and forth, most of the time using medicine if I can, if there are lesser injuries, and only using magic on the more severe. It looks as if the only people who actually came for medical assistance are those who are severe. The ones with lesser injuries are like, I can deal with this. So be it. There's, there's a fair amount of them. Going running back and forth between them. <laughs> okay, so you're tiring yourself out with that. Sherman, are you saying anything to Sid while you're in here, or are you just kind of helping? Yes. For the night? Yes. No. She comes in and goes straight to Sid and kind of put the hand out to kind of stop him in mid stride and be like, "I'm here, darling. Let me help you. What is it you need?" I, uh, I, honestly, most of these people are beyond what I can do with just bandages. Um. <clears throat> I've just been trying to staunch as much bleeding as I can and stabilize. All right. I will help you. We'll work together. Right. And I think Sol, Sol is coming here as well. Hmm? Yes, Are you I, feeling... I'm here to help. <laughs> Are you feeling so, any better? Uh, immensely better. Immensely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for for how I was behaving back there, and I I know you were trying to help. I know the others were trying to help as well. I, I do, so I apologize for anything I may have said or have done to upset them. That was not my intention. You had to get back to your family. You didn't do anything out of turn. <laughs> you hear Kevin and Steve <laughs> Outside, really loud. Anime style. Yeah. <laughs> His nose starts bleeding. Yeah. Thank you for that. But um, I would, we'll talk more about this later. I'm, I let's help the rest of these people as best as we can. Absolutely. So Sherbin is pretty much so, as needed. She's uh, going to use 
all her spell slots if needed, if it means to help the people around her. Okay. Um, between the two of you, you work yourselves to exhaustion. Um, and then at a certain point in the night, people stop coming for help. Those who you did help are very appreciative and they're going off on their own to, to heal. Those who can't move are staying there to heal. Uh, but you're completely spent by some sometime around midnight, we'll say. Otherwise, I will collapse. Hmm? We didn't quite catch all that. Is that better? Can you hear me now? So, yep. Okay. See, darling, we should probably go back to the tent and uh, get some rest. Otherwise, we'll fall asleep standing on our feet this way. It's fine, as long as there's nobody else coming. That seems fair. There's other, there's other healers in the cap that can pick up where we left off. All right. Um, you notice know, that on a train near you guys, uh, somebody had dropped off food for you. Uh, it looks like a loaf of bread. And they don't know when it was dropped off, but it was some time ago. It's Archon Loaf. It is Archon Loaf. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> just so you know, uh, Kevin has arranged all the normal sleeping uh, stuff, but he's kind of secluded um, Sherwin and the professor's area a little bit further away from everyone, and it's kind of like set it up nice, <laughs> you know, like, Aww. you know. <laughs> The love corner. The love corner. Yeah. <laughs> Not that anything's gonna happen, but just trying to give, give my, give the professor a leg up, basically. <laughs> Tripod. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> and uh, it is not a tripod. Come on. <laughs> he's and Kevin's dead asleep, snoring. By the time you guys get back. Oh, okay. Sure. Sorry. Yeah, Alex came back. Oh, uh, yay. Uh, Sherman is actually going to, um, right as they get in between the group's camp and her family's tent, um, she's going to squeeze uh, Sid's hand again and stand up on tippy toes to uh, get a kiss from him and say, darling, please get some good rest tonight. Have some of this bread, please. And she tears apart, or tears in half the archon loaf that was um, that was left for them back in the in the medic tent, and offers the half to him. Um, please, I need to be with my family for for now. I hope you understand. Yes. He takes the bread. I'll take the bread. Go to the bag of holding. Uh, bring out one of the bracelet and ring combos and hand it over to her. You don't have to explain yourself. We're here for you. She takes the bracelet and rings and just smiles so wide up at him. She sort of wipes her eye. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Go be you, with really do, you really do understand me. Thank you so much. Puts the ring on and the bracelet, and then takes her leave to be in her family's tent. Okay. Do you try and eat the archon loaf, Sid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's um probably the most unpleasant thing you've ever put in your mouth, and yet it still seems filling. I take one bite, and that's about it. <laughs> Like cornbread? World equivalent. Uh, no. Uh, there's somebody that I, I hope not. There's somebody <laughs> that walks by and sees that you take a, took a bite of the Arkham loaf. Uh, you haven't seen this person before, and they just kind of laugh. <laughs> First time. Yeah, yeah, it's um, party. It takes some getting used to, but we were told to make it by uh, a, a visitor from a place called Charlian. I've Please. heard of the place, never been. I certainly can't say anything for the taste. 
Well, I can't. It's awful. But it is. it will keep you going for a very long period of time with very little of it. It's uh, full of nutrients. I'm not sure what those are. Uh, well, uh, whatever it is, it's appreciated. Yes. Try not to um, swallow it all at once. I, I think I'm quite full. You should also probably drink some water with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's laughing as he walks away. I'll go to my bedroll and ignore the green smoke coming completely off of him at this point and try to get some rest. Okay. Um, for those who are not aware, our ground loaf is a thing in the game. It is fucking awful. <laughs> it's baked with uh, fish bones and vegetable flour. <laughs> It's basically designed to be like the most nutrient dense bread you can make with zero consideration of the taste. taste. Yeah, exactly. It, it, like hardtack, if hardtack was more nutritionally beneficial. There you go. Got it. Yeah. What does it do to your character when you eat it? It's it's not. It literally will keep you awake and it will keep you thinking. It's literally as as he said, as nutrient dense as possible. Just awful. But yeah, it was made by uh, by scholars in Charlie and because they wanted to stay awake while they were studying. That's literally all it was. I just figured, it's like in the culinary world, it is the equivalent of the Jurassic Park. They only thought of what they could, not if <laughs> they should. They should. <laughs> all right, so continue. Somebody was saying something before I did. Sid wrap up his sleepiness routine. He's just gonna go over to his bed and eventually try to sleep. Okay. Anyone else doing anything tonight? Yeah. So really what we need to do, we have two immediate projects. We gotta finish the armor for Soul, and then we have to complete the new award for the professor. In sign language yes, can we do both tonight? Yes. With your help, I can. we can accomplish both things. Dang. And we have about four hours each, so that would be four hours if both of us are working on it. Okay. Then she'll Millie grabs the um, new Lith parts and sets about working on that because she doesn't know what the fuck to do with armor. Right. Okay. Are you that doing anything sense. special with the new Lith this time? I know that you're making him a second one. Yeah. But is it going to look any different than the first? Well, it's going to look different because like the original one it had a lot of like clockwork mechanism to it because that's what our tech was. Mm -hmm. But now we have some Garvian gadgetry and devices. And that's strap. true because it's a different basis point. It's yeah. not completely from scratch. Cool. Yeah. Um, where when Sid is using using his Newolith and it's by himself or uh, it's on his person, um, what position is it floating at? Over the left shoulder. Over the left shoulder. Oh. Okay, so like, but so basically, like, it's not. Yeah, when Sid's using it, it's not within his line of sight. No, like up and behind it. Okay, gotcha. Then the back of it will have um, a little uh, like pink engraved Makote face with a little tongue sticking out, specifically so that everyone but Sid can see that. Until he sends it forward. Until he sends it forward, <laughs> but mutually. If it's just idle, he won't see it. I love it. I love it. Alright. Okay. Anything special with Soul's armor? No. There was the uh, uh, Tiamans, the, the remnants of Tiamans right. leather. Yes. So Cool. Yeah. Does Soul know that? Uh, armor? Alex knows about it. Okay. Yeah. Soul, does, Soul doesn't know. But... Okay. Cool. Uh, Tavi, you doing anything tonight? Or are you just drinking with Kenji still? Probably just that, unless they... Come get me to help them with the new Aleph. Yeah, that'll make it go quicker and and we, yeah, because because we had gone shopping together, Tavi. So yeah, you definitely right. You right. can right. come over and. But I mean, like, Tavi wouldn't know that you guys are working on it, so you'd have to come. Like, hey, you want to work on this? M Melly would go grab Tavi to help on that, especially considering it's Garly and Tech that's being used as the basis point. Okay. Right. Yeah, then Tavi would go help. Okay, uh, which you're you're actually kind of grateful for because the drink that they had was <laughs> essentially kombucha yeah. with less taste. Actually, I don't just like kombucha. It's not bad. No. I never had it, but it just can the be description bad. of it sounds yeah, terrible. Yeah, it can be bad. But I've had, I've had some good kombuchas. <laughs> ben, what is going what on? What did he do? <laughs> God damn it. Ben. What did he do? I don't know what he had, but he had something. There was just like some orange something stuck to his nose, and he kept trying <laughs> to look it off. <laughs> but he couldn't get it at first. 
Oh wait, wait. Oh okay, it was a, it was a, it wasn't orange. It was just a leaf that was reflecting. <laughs> <laughs> but it was stuck like right here on his face, and he kept oh, trying to get it. Poor doggo. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh -oh. uh, thanks for the, the uh, drink. Uh, Kenji, you you enjoy. I'm gonna go help them with the, uh, with smithing stuff. All right. They, they don't, yeah, they just kind of nod and then they go back to Kenji. So please, tell us more about uh, mahjong. Oh well, and he lays out the mahjong table and they play <laughs> single game and proceeds to lose to all these Every brand new game players. Every game, people who just learned <laughs> and does not win. I love it. Okay. Um, out of character. Sure. Um, out of character. Kenji's from the step, yeah? He's from Dota. Uh, yeah. He's not where he's raised, though. Okay. Well, so... sorry. It's where he was raised, but not where he spent most of his adult wow. Okay, so would he have also have. What? Uh, I have a hard time hearing you. Can you repeat what you just said? I said he grew up there until he was like 12, and then he went to. So, okay. Wherever that is. You, you went to around Kuga Um That's the cool. one. Yeah. All right, cool. So, so why were you asking? Because uh, I wanted to know if Kenji had any um, ties to any of the other tribes in the steppe. That's up to Kenji. Not particularly, actually. His family abandoned their tribe. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> Gotcha. He's part of the no talk tribe, and he's like, "No, nah, I'm out." <laughs> <laughs> they saw them coming for his vocal cords. He's like, "Fuck this <laughs> shit, I'm out." <laughs> all right. So, sleep comes for all of you eventually. It's you're quite tired. The trip here, and then everything that went on since, has been pretty draining, both physically and emotionally. Um, we need to roll I, initiative. No. For, for what? No. When sleep comes for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, battle time. Now, um, now, uh, it it just feels good to finally drift off to sleep. And as far as you know, nothing odd happens during the night. <laughs> What's that mean? That's it. So when the morning comes around, people are way more active. They're louder. They're not really caring about people that are sleeping with the noise that they're making. But it's probably around 8 or 9 a.m., which is pretty late to get up, according to them, that you guys start to wake. Oh, yeah. Whoa, oh, man. I didn't think I'd sleep so much. You come up before the sun rises. Oh, must have been extra tired. It was a stressful right? day. No. Oh, uh, hey, Sid. Uh, how'd things go uh, last night? Well, we, we helped a lot of people. No, well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad you helped the people. I mean, you know, afterwards. Uh, we came back here. Sherbin went to be with her family, and I went to sleep. Wait, uh, uh, Sherwin Sher didn't stay here? No. Hey, uh, everything okay, Professor? Yeah, Kevin. We, we, we came here for her to be with her family. Okay, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying, you know, uh, it's to be weird. I mean, uh, I know, uh, even though my mirror is kind of arranged, uh, you know, I had some loves in, in, in some sweethearts in high school, and, uh, you know, the competition sometimes ain't fun, uh, but I think, uh, honestly, I looked at all of them. They're... I want to say, uh, you know, the, the best looking out of the bunch. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, if you want to talk about it or, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm here. I love those sounds that Kevin makes so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you know, the same sound. Exactly. <laughs> Two things. Number one, this is probably not the time or place to talk about that given what's going on outside. Right, right. Kind of wink at him. <laughs> Exasperated Sid is best Sid. And number two, there's, 
there's, there's no competition, Kevin. Okay. Right, of course, no competition, except, you know, there's always a favorite and the least favorite. I'm just saying I'm going to help you be the most favorite. Huh? Kevin, that's not up to you or me. That's up to her, and I'm not looking to be anybody's favorite. Yeah, okay, yeah, whatever you say, Professor. I got you. You know, no competition. Give him a wink. DX and I are on the case. Oh, oh my God. Somebody walks up. You haven't seen this person, or if you have, hmm. you haven't interacted with it. She's like, are you aware that your voice carries around the entire cave? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I didn't realize it, but yeah. uh, you can't speak loud, but... Uh, you speak very loud. As, as a leader, I think it's important yeah. that, uh, you know, you command attention, and one of the ways you do that is kind of uh, be real loud with your voice. May I posit something else to a leader? I don't know what posit means, but Propose. yes, you can. Oh, yeah, whoa, oh, oh, I'm oh, in. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask. You can say something to me, of course. If your voice is loud, right, right, right. You do so, so many people can hear you. Right, right. You are aware we are in the cave. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what the acoustics are. It means your voice bounces <laughs> off of walls and gets louder. And oh, hear those oh, people. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Do you remember what's outside? Yeah, a bunch of uh, animals. Oh, oh, do you, oh. Can you walk through this door on your own, or do I need to lead you to it? Where's the door? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Be like a pigeon, so your coup sticks. No, he talks! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> she gets one sentence. It was a pun. That's it. <laughs> and nobody seems to notice at all. No! <laughs> Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> you're going to keep it down, and I, I don't know what you've got in mind, but I'm fine. Right, right. No, no, of course you're fine. You know, uh, you know how these you got things go. Uh, I'm always fine. But you know what? I'm here for you. Don't you worry about it, Professor. I, I won't. <laughs> I won't either. Wink, wink. I head back to anyway. the and immediately. Uh, you scared him off again, Kate. Hey, we gotta figure this out, DX. I mean, look, this is great and all. What we, everyone knows about it in our group, but uh, I don't know anything about these other people. You know, uh, keep a careful eye out. I mean, things look like it was fine, but I don't know. You know, we gotta make sure whatever we do that. Sherwin loves the professor the most. Number one. Well, yeah, he's a very lovable guy. I, I think so, too. Yeah. So, uh, if you see something, let me know. And if I see something, I'll let you know. Okay, that's a deal. Perfect. Anyway, I'm starving. What do they got here around right here? I left uh, the Archon Loaf on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say it. Oh, it looks like the professor left some bread for you there. KT. Oh, yeah, kind of looks familiar. <laughs> and take, I take a huge bite. A huge bite. A huge bite. All right. It's kind of like biting into a beach. Oh. <coughs> and he chews it and kind of swallows it down. <laughs> I think this one went bad. Hey, ah, I don't think I'm going to eat this. When it hits your stomach and, and the flavor kind of dissipates a little bit, you realize that. You not only feel full from a small bite, you also feel pretty alert. Oh, oh! It's yes. store brand Lembus bread. Hey, hey. <laughs> this, this stuff tastes like a 12 year old Popoto, but you gotta buy this! It's all I don't want a 12 year old Popoto. Why not? 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 You trust me, right? You trust me, right? <laughs> I do, but you're acting very strange. Hey, just very let me jittery. put this in your mouth. I, I think you're gonna like it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> and I kind of like take a small piece and put it in, in her mouth. I just swallow it. My pro- <laughs> Kevin telling her to swallow Well, this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this is like that one time I was like face down in the sand. 
Oh, when you were face down in the dirt? Yeah, that's what it tastes like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I was behind you, trying to get you up, and I, I kept just dropping. Yeah. Yeah. My balance was all off that day. Oh, uh, hey, how you feeling? Well, my eyes are all booked out. I'm all jittery, so... Great. We need to get to work on some stuff. Hey, you gotta finish your sword. Let's yeah. let, let, let finish your sword. I'm gonna go off and I gotta finish your sword. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so while that is happening, uh, Millie's gonna go find uh, Sherman's oldest son. <laughs> okay. And, uh, she, well, uh, beforehand, she's going to make a cup of tea with some very particular leaves and berries. Oh, God. And then she's gonna go ask Sherman's oldest son to drink it. No. <laughs> to give it to Kevin in exchange for candy. Smart. Okay, smart. <laughs> so she just hands him a nice warm cup of tea and then... Uh, Do I get the candy first? She'll, she'll hold up two sticks, give him one, and then... I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and so, on your L. Wait, first off, you see that there are lines of little bread chopped up. Oh my god! And oh, that's good! Oh my god! 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 No more compastor. Cocaine loaf. Yeah, cocaine loaf. You ordered it in bricks, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out in bricks. It's good, because it, it hits your stomach like Like a brick, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, oh, 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 oh. Hey, 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 mister, mister, we brought you some tea. Hey, hey, hey yo, you, you sure was okay, right? Okay, so it's not cocaine, Kevin. It just makes you alert. It's like caffeinated oh, bread with nutrients. It was cocaine. Hey. It's, it's, not, it's not like you're sniffing at Adderall or anything. No fun. <laughs> hey, yeah, you sure was good, ain't you? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not looking like you at <laughs> I'm not looking at you. Anyway, uh, we got you some tea oh, since it's so for your Archon Loaf. Hey, hey, is how many, just one glass? <laughs> it's one cup. Oh. It's, what did you put in there? Just the leaves? And the berries. The leaves and the berries. Okay. And you See, it. it was steeped in the leaves and the berries. Okay. But it's uh, just the juice in the cup. Uh, Kevin takes a sip. What does it taste like? It actually tastes very sweet. Oh, that's delicious. Yes, yeah, you gotta try this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a big swig of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was really good. Millie cool. kills her greatest <laughs> enemy and her closest friend. <laughs> 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 um, okay. <laughs> so you both sipped it? Yeah. Yep. Well, we'll share it together. We'll finish it. We're good at sharing. I'd probably take a little bit more than she does. But okay. 60 40. Yeah, 60 40. He comes back. Uh, a girl comes back. It's like, can I have the other candy now? I, I gave it to your friend and he shared it with his friend. Which is <laughs> be confused, but hand him the um, uh, rock candy stick and three, Thanks, gu- three gumballs. Hey. Thanks, miss. He runs off. Looking yeah. for his brother. Thinks nothing of it. She's going to go stare at the Allegan machinery. Okay. It is literally thrumming with etheric energy. You can feel it. It's going to start fucking with it, waiting until something else. I don't think it'll fit. <laughs> with it, not this. There was a whiff. There's an operative out of the verb there. I'm just picturing Millie trying to get off on a giant structure. <laughs> just fucking it. What is this campaign? <sighs> I don't know, but I want my cocaine bread. Work on that, guys. Figure that out. That's what happens. Well, see, it's you just get like um, a loaf of potato bread, but the the flour on the top is cocaine. There you go. You get it. All right. We'll, we'll make it in real life. Uh, but yeah, so Millie's just gonna try to discern the secrets of the Allegan machinery until somebody pulls her away for something important. Roll an arcane check. My favorite. Uh, seven. You have no idea how this works. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. Yeah. It's just, it's interesting. It has something to do with ether. Does it, like, does the machinery actually vibrate when it is, like, with the energy going through it's it? It's not vibrating, but the air around it is. I'm going to lay on it like a massage chair. <laughs> okay, it kind of works. <laughs> yep, that's the extent of what she's up to. Um, yes, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go check to see if, uh, we have, uh, the, the, we're gonna go talk to, uh, the queen, or whatever, the leader. Okay. Kevin starts sprinting over. Before you do, right as oh, you okay. say goodbye to Deus, I need both of you to make a constitution saving throw. 
Well, of course. Uh, 26. Jesus. I rolled 18. No, oh, 5. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you take one step before you literally uncontrollably double over in pain and fall to the ground. Oh! Deus. You don't even get that far. You just immediately pass out and hit the ground. <laughs> All the blood is draining from your face. Oh, that's not good. Oh, oh, I look over at DX. You see that where her her veins like she's she's eyes open, passed out on the floor, and you see her veins are changing color. It looks to be like a black color that's running through her blood. Oh, I uh, professor, professor, and I kind of crawl over. To oh, DX. Full of Constitution saving throw. 18. Okay. Um, you're realizing that every time you move, it seems to get worse. Doesn't matter. It keeps going. Can uh, Deus I... roll one new character? Uh, 14. <laughs> Deus has to roll three new characters. Uh, That's how bad it is. I pass out, like, <laughs> face down in DX's crotch. <laughs> that Damn it. And Deus, you couldn't get to her cross anyway because you fell over like this. Oh, my uh, God. I would have been able to hear with Ellis in here hearing. So, yeah, I go back out there and notice this. Okay. Um, it's not really funny at this point. Mm. It looks incredibly serious. Uh, Deus does not appear to be breathing. And it looks like... <laughs> it, it looks like they're literal like sludge running through her veins, and it appears that Kevin, who is now also knocked out, it's starting to happen to him too. I mean, um, first thing. Of which, both of you take roll forty six, and then roll forty six again, and then roll forty six four more times. Okay, so both of you take um, ten damage for the first first time, and the second bit of it is another nineteen damage. Jesus. Oh. So it's 29 total damage that you've taken so far. Uh, I regret nothing. So I really regret nothing. I regret everything. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the veins on Deus, I would cast a lesser resurrection on her. <laughs> okay. Lesser. Hold on a second. What condition are you trying to remove? I would imagine poison. Do you know that they're poison, or are you? Can I roll, can I check them? You can roll a medicine check first. <coughs> Nineteen. Okay, both of them are pretty clearly poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, why did I even think anything else would have happened right now? Um, who, are you, who are you using Lesser Restoration on first? Deus, because she's not breathing. <laughs> okay. So, suddenly Deus starts breathing. After you finish your spell and the poison kind of evaporates off of her, you just, <gasps> like this, and you're on the ground and still still unable to move your entire body feels like it's cramped up and as soon as you try to stretch out you you just immediately collapse back together again you're in tremendous pain still um what's next what are you doing sid another spell slot for kevin thank you <laughs> okay <laughs> kevin same thing happens um i'll, I'll spare a lot of the details but the poison very fast acting, is no longer in your body, but the damage it left behind is. It's not exactly organ failure. It's more like internal organ lacerations from the poison. Jesus. So uh, you, you're both in tremendous amount of pain still. You're probably out of commission for a bit. <laughs> DX! <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, Katie is like... 
I don't understand it, because, like, this is my, my chronic food poisoning got worse, I'm like, and I just already had the food poisoning, like, a week ago. I'm, so. like, super alert, but, but, like, I'm really sick. <laughs> I'm getting it. Uh, you're not alert anymore. Here's the remove poison would also get rid of the effects of uh, your cut loaf. <laughs> that, that all being said, I feel like if the Charlians did have access to Adderall, they would mainline it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I think we ate too much of that loaf. I'm sorry I came to you. I didn't realize it was bad. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that. <laughs> Let's not eat any food that tastes like dirt anymore, okay? Yeah, yeah. Maybe they have some more more of that tea. It was really yummy. <laughs> At this point, there are people that are walking around. What happened? I think the loaf went bad. I, I point to like a piece, like a quarter left of, a lo of the loaf. What did you drink? <laughs> I don't know, uh, one of Sherwin, Sherwin's kids came over and gave us some tea. Tea? Yeah. What was it good with? I don't know, but it was really sweet and really nice. In fact, I think I could go for some more. Uh, make, make, make my stomach stop feeling like it's on fire. Where is this cup? I point to the cup. He walks over and, and looks at the remnants of it and just throws the cup. You did not drink this, did you? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we just said that we did. Yeah. I mean, you, you gotta listen a little better. I drank about 60% of it, uh, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably about 40% of it, I think. <laughs> you are lucky to be alive. It's the only time is... Kevin's ever used the word percent. <laughs> oh no, suddenly he knows math. Wait, what? What's that plant? It's incredibly poisonous. Wait. It, it is used to coat our arrows in poison before we shoot them at animals. <sighs> I would sure when this kid tried to kill us. Not no, I would try to find this out if I were you. <laughs> okay, in a bit. No one drink anything from Sherwin's kid. I recommend that. I recommend that you do not move from where you are. Movement makes it worse. I'm gonna still crawl towards the X. I am shocked that you are alive. Uh, I told Did you. Did you not that you drink? That is enough to take down several Gulo Gulo. <laughs> I told you, kill a little bath, and you think a little bit of poison is gonna. And yes. I just profusely start vomiting. <laughs> yes, I do think so. <laughs> if you were, you were there, doctor? Uh, apparently. <laughs> I would keep watch over them for liver and kidney failure. Excellent. <laughs> Professor, I know I may piss her with all, but I forgot why she sent her kids to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> Do not move, Kevin. Stay there. So, seeing this happen, <laughs> Millie is going to immediately... You're not, you're not seeing it happen. You're getting you off think the wouldn't, You think she wouldn't be keeping an eye on Ogril delivering poison to Kevin to right. bask in the effects of that? <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fair. But so as soon as Sid got involved, sure, she'd see them pass out with Deus passing out and Kevin pa first and then Kevin passing out. And as soon as Sid walked over, he's like, eh, they're fine. She's going to run over to that plant and harvest as much as she can gather. Yes. <laughs> um, wearing gloves? Of course. Okay. Um, the she's plant got, she's is got, not very big. She's got it. ten vials. She's going to basically like shove, like smush leaves and berries into each of the ten vials. So remember I told you you had a hard time finding the plant to begin with? The plant is small, so there's not a lot there. Once it gets to a certain size, it just kind of dies off. So... I would say that you got enough for maybe three applications of, of it on a weapon at this point, if that's what you were going to use it for. Or ingest it again. Intentionally decide. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, which child gave you this? Um, I don't remember which child is here. Agarol, the oldest one. K-O-K-I-R-I? -I? Yeah. Kiri, like the, the oldest one, the one that was the biggest. Okay. Both of you stay right there. Don't drink anything. Don't take anything. Just don't do anything. I'll try my best. Uh-oh. Uh, Kevin, like, pulls down his pants. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Evacuates a little bit. You try, but you're intent you're, you're tremendously constipated. Okay, so the pants are still pulled down. And just just the butt showing. I'll, I'll try not to do much else. Start heading towards the family tent and throw a sleeping bag at Kevin. <laughs> Just kind of lands on top of him. Ow! Good enough. So. Okay, and where are you going? The family? Going to look for Ogdorel. <laughs> okay. 
He's sitting in the tent um, with his brothers, and all three of them have have rock candy. You know, I, I was going to come in here and ask a question, but I think I already know the answer. <laughs> they offer you a rock candy? Like, like what? No, thank you. On? <laughs> oh, gross. I'm going I'm to... Just to, to confirm, I'm gonna cons I'm gonna guess that you got that from uh, poofy tail, pointy ears, quiet. Are we, are we in trouble? No. Then yes. M Mila gave us candy. Hmm. I bet she did. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Maybe she'll give you some too if you ask. I bet. <laughs> Turn and head back out and look for Millie. <laughs> well, she's off harvesting plant right now. Mm -hmm. What's everyone else doing? The dankest of Kush. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what you want. <laughs> not ideal. Never imagined Millie was going to be the ultimate downfall. <laughs> How did you dodge your campaign? What was poisoned by one of our group members? Poisoned in a prank. Yeah, a prank gone wrong. DM leaves a hint that there's poisonous plants out there. Millie, without checking what the poison does, gives it to somebody in the party. Is <laughs> anyone surprised? No. <laughs> Just pointing it out. I mean, she was hoping for, like, a poison ivy level. This is better now. Better. Better. It's okay. more versatile. Oh, All right. So, rescue. I should have listened to Kenzie. Did you uh, yes. finish the armor? <laughs> What's that? Did you finish the armor? Yeah, I finished the armor. Have you given it to, to oh, Sol yet? Okay, okay, so so for Sol's armor, um, I would have placed it next to him in his bedroll okay. overnight so he could wake up to it. So, Sol, when you wake up, there is a set of armor next to you. Uh, in, in character, he doesn't know anything about it, right? Right. Oh, was it a complete surprise that Deus was working on that? It was a surprise for Sol, yeah. Ah, nice. Does Sol yeah. recognize the craftsmanship at all? Yeah, it looks exactly like Sid's, but it's, the coloring is different. Would you color it? It's lined with that plant that Millie found. <laughs> yeah, it's like the same wing color was. It was like bronze, I think. Bronzish beige color. Okay, so it's like a bronzish beige for the, the leather part of it, and then the rivets are just like a standard copper rivet, whereas Sid's is the verdolene blue with the gold rivets. Okay, um, I would go looking for Deus then, if I recognize the craftsmanship, to uh, thank her and uh, ask about it. Sure. You don't have to go very far before you find Deus and Kevin on the floor. Uh, Professor, do you do you need my uh, help again? I'm not there right now. I'm I want to find Millie. <laughs> Professor's not there right now. Hey, hey so uh, try to avoid Sherwin's kids trying to kill us. What? What? What do they do to you? <laughs> poison. Really bad poison. Poison. Stomach feels, yeah, my stomach feels like it's on fire. Uh. Are, are you guys going to be okay? Do you need me to cast uh, some healing spells on you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Professor seems like he's taking care of it. But yeah, I, I could always go for it. Might make anything right now to make the burning stop. I will cast yeah. uh, Healing Word on Kevin to see if it makes him feel better there. No, but um, do DX first! <laughs> And I will cast it on DX. Okay. Very, very slight. Slightly feeling better. But it's like, this feels like something that's going to take some time to heal on its own. But we do get life back. We lost my life back. Good, because I was half dead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly half dead. How much for healing work? For DX, at least. It is one d four plus. 
his spell cast. Spell cast. Or his uh, spell modifier. Yeah, what's your, what's your wisdom modifier? What's your wisdom spell? So? Yeah, well, it would be based on a spell casting modifier, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be the yeah. charisma for Bard? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, what's your charisma modifier? Uh, plus four, 18. So you, okay, so it's 1d4 plus four. Okay. So you roll a 1d4 to determine how much you heal them. Yeah, so roll 1d4 and then add four to it. Unless you're upcasting it, because you can cast it at a higher level to heal more. Uh, that's a five. Oh, thank you. So nine total then? Oh no, five total. Sorry. Five total, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. How are you feeling, DX? I feel a little bit better, yeah. Kevin. But th thanks, Soul, for doing that. Um, just so you know, if we happen to die from this, please make sure that Sherbin grounds him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that more than that happens. Uh, I'm gonna go find the professor. Uh, okay. And Soul's gonna stand up and go try and find him. Did he heal me? <laughs> no, he did. He, he, oh, he, he does both. Oh, okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're looking for Millie Ware, Professor? I have no I was just going to walk around a little bit because I wouldn't know that she went out to get it. Sure, you see Sol, who's also walking around, appears to be looking for someone, potentially you. <laughs> Sol? Oh, Sid, uh, I was looking for you. Um, I got to talk to you about something. Um, can we find some privacy? Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking for Millie, but yeah. What's up? I'll Sir, bring uh, him over near the medical tent. Um, Billy, I just I just came across Kevin and uh, Deus, and they said <laughs> that they were poisoned by Millie's kids. I, I think there's something going on here, and... Oh, if only she knew, she'd be so happy. <laughs> so, uh, they were poisoned, <laughs> and I guess, in a way, it was from one of Sherbin's sons. Loki, but not intentional. <laughs> what? Do you, what do you mean? Well. I'm looking for Millie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if you come across I'm her, um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, Sherman, what are you doing right now? Well... <laughs> um, Sherbin was going to be a little bit selfish in the morning and spend as much time uh, in bed with her husbands uh, as allowed before they had to go oh, to the big sleeping yeah. bag. Oh, why not? Uh, uh, before it's basically a polycule because your husbands are very affectionate with each other too. So works for me. Um, so she did. She's doing that uh, until they have to go to their respective posts, understandably. Um, except for I'm guessing Shengi's because he is injured. So she's still in bed with him. He's taken on a new role. He now trains younger hunters. That soon? Okay. Well, that's what he decided he's going to do, and he doesn't want to sit around and be useless. So that was. Okay. Okay. So he's gone as well. Well, after you guys have your morning cuddle session, sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so then she uh, gets out, and she planned on uh, visiting other other members of the tribe to see if she if anyone she knew was still there. Um, uh, she's got a. What about her kids? Are the kids still in, her, in the tent with her, or have they gone to... They're um, in a separate tent where they're just kind of being mischievous and eating candy. Okay. All right. So she wouldn't she wouldn't be able to see them then. Um, so she's going to walk out, and she had planned, yeah, planned to do that other thing. And then she noticed Kevin and Diaz on the floor. Okay, Rip, before you get there, I wanted to have one quick conversation with the ex. Hey, DX, Deus, 
if we don't make it out of this, I think it's important you should know. I've always thought of you as, you know, a sister, my best friend. I had a huge crush on you in eighth grade. <laughs> oh my God. When, when I was in eighth grade or when you were in eighth when grade? When I was in eighth grade. <laughs> Actually, we did have a little bit of overlap with that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it went from creepy to sad. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you should know. Oh, okay, go, 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 go. Kevin, I, I appreciate you being honest with me. And if I was going to be honest with you, yeah. you know, I, I like you too, but then you married Georgine, and then after that, then I became a girl, and then it was too late. Yeah, it was an arranged <laughs> marriage, and, you know, uh, yeah, it's, I don't care that you're a boy or a girl. You're always my best friend. Oh, thanks, Kevin. You're always my best friend, too. <laughs> If I'm gonna die with somebody, at least this is my friend. Yeah, same here, DX. <laughs> at least we'll die together. And then Sherman walks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she looks at both of them and she's kind of. Do I want to know what happened? Do we hear you? She's next yes. To you. Yeah. <laughs> Your oldest kid tried to kill us. She poisoned us. <laughs> Oh, he poisoned us! What? what? Yeah, he gave us some type of tea laced with that that plant I'm not supposed to rub my, my butt with! What? You would immediately recognize this as, uh, as the Kokiri plant, and you know to stay the fuck away from it and how poisonous it is. Oh, great dust, mother. You didn't. You drank it. You both no. drank it. Well, to be fair, I drank 60%. <laughs> I only drank 40%. <laughs> but apparently that was enough. Yeah, oh yeah. Everything feels like burning inside. Simply touching it would have been enough. You guys ingested way more than you needed to. Gosh, and you're alive. Oh my god. No, I'm pretty sure we're gonna die. I'm sorry I couldn't complete our quest together. Uh, do me a favor. Uh, uh, treat Sid nice. Uh, make him your favorite. <laughs> I see about it. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it misses your sandals somehow. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, would there be anything nearby to... Uh, uh, apply to them to help with the pain to make them no. a little bit more helpful. No, not at all. No, no. None of the other healers would have anything like that. You know that the effect of the poison is a lot like if you somehow swallowed razor blades and they would move through your, uh, your bloodstream unimpeded. So, I mean, do they have something like kind of like semi-neutralize the poison? I mean, technically it's already been neutralized. They don't, they don't have an anti-venom. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. There's not one that exists here and they don't know how to synthesize medicine. So. Makes sense. Okay. Do they have alcohol available? Oh my. Uh, there's the kombucha stuff. Jared uh, Leto's uh, Bard Kombucha from Glass Onion. I haven't seen it. It's great. <laughs> I want to. Darlings, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get you something that will help a little bit with the pain, and it'll help even more the more you drink of it. All right? Be right back. Just do not move. Yeah, do not man. move your rats. Before you go, just make sure you get the big switch. Uh, I think that'll be right for the beating. Oh I'm not going to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> beat the poison out. <laughs> oh, never mind. So Sherman is uh. Before she leaves to get the alcohol, she stops at her kid's little tent. She kind of peeks her head in. Um, no, Lings, would you mind telling me, oh, Hi, Mom? She kind of narrows her eyes. Are they still eating the rock candy? Yes. <laughs> Lings is going to have all the adults in the entire encampment coming after her. <laughs> so the, the two, um, our girl's trying to hide it. The other two are not. <laughs> It was eight, six, and three. Eight, five, and three. Five and three, right? Uh, eight, six, and three. 
Oh, okay, I guess that was wrong. Love it. <laughs> uh, sweethearts, did you get that, uh, candy from, uh, one of my friends? Yeah, your furry friend. One of them. Oh, maybe okay, it's the one... the furry friend. <laughs> is the furry too? No. Okay. Makoto don't have fur. Omega is covered Compared in Compared to them, you do. Yeah. I don't know. Omega is the culprit. Was it the one with the um, the long hair not kept in the braid? The with with really dark talk. hair? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she like That's immediately... fight us. <laughs> Wait, say that again? Let's go. Not, not the really loud one that's trying to fight us, but it's the <laughs> quiet one. All right, good. Thank you for that distinction. Um, and she immediately <laughs> narrows her eyes at Odgaro. Um, sweetheart, uh, my little, little starlight, um, did she ask you to do something? Yeah, she, she gave us this food. It's really good. You want to taste it? Oh, I've had it before. I know it's very delicious. Yeah, I feel really hyper. I just want to go do <laughs> stuff. Like, I kind of want to climb up the wall. Millie's smoke screen is giving all of the children candy. <laughs> they can't find me if the kids are running wild. Well, um, if you really want to uh, play, you can go out and uh, play with some of the other children and burn off some of that energy. But first, um, you need to tell me what she asked you to do. She wanted me to deliver a cup of tea to her friend. Of course she did. All right. Not uh, in trouble. No, 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 sweetheart. You didn't do anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Um, okay. Enjoy your time, okay? And go play with the other children if you if you need to. All right. Okay. All right. She kisses all three of them before she uh. Heads out and goes to get the alcohol for two capacitated peeps. Okay. Are you really going to give alcohol to two people that have liver failure? We said potential liver failure. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. I did say potential. Okay. Um, sure. You. It's not hard to find. There's barrels and barrels full of the stuff where they ferment it. She's going to bring back uh, quite a bit for uh, Deus and Kevin. Just uh, at least enough to dull whatever they're feeling. And if they want her to have more, she's not going right. to stop them. All right. No, no thanks. You. I, I can't. Don't think I can drink anything right now. To be perfectly honest, uh, I don't know why your kids would try to kill us. Oh, I, I, under, I understand. Uh, Kevin, I I really do, but um, you can take my word for it. Um, Odgaro did not mean to do this to you. Um, he would never knowingly do this to you. He was actually asked to do it by someone else. So, <laughs> there's another person that tried to assassinate us. Apparently, was it the ninja? The ninjas? <laughs> the ninja? Oh God, the ninjas are bad. No. No. Oh, maybe it was the Babadook no. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 it was not, uh, it was not a ninja in, a, a, in that sense. Uh, but, uh, she's very sneaky, uh, mm -hmm. and very quiet. Ninja? Mm -hmm. like a ninja. <laughs> like a ninja. <laughs> we won't bring Kenji in. Go get, go get, get a second opinion. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Leave that other bottle. <laughs> oh, no. no. Well, be careful. If you if you feel like you cannot drink this, you do not have to. But in uh, from what I've seen, this is a really good uh, substitute for the pain in general. You promise not poison? I well, as long as you don't drink too much of it. <laughs> All right. It literally is poison. <laughs> if, if, if you say it's gonna help, <laughs> Kevin takes a sip. Your tongue is at the point where uh, what you drank made it so that you can't really taste anything. Yeah. So your taste buds are, are effectively in the off position at the moment. So <laughs> it doesn't taste awful to you, mm -hmm. but you do feel a little better for the moment. Oh, DX drink so feel a little better. Same description. But we're only 40%. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. 
And we're gonna get super drunk in the next like ten minutes. By the way. All right, <laughs> Sherman's not to do this. Sherman <laughs> Sherman's... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sherman is actually going to stay with uh, Kevin and Diaz and make sure they don't drink too much to the point of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, you gave them the bottle, and between the two of them, they, they share it, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's keeping the other stuff uh, out of their reach. What's the ABV on this? <laughs> it's not super high alcohol content. It's enough, if you drink enough of it, then, yeah, you'll get buzzed, you'll get drunk, but it's like, it's like 4%. Yeah, she's just, yeah. she just wants them to be comfortable, not passed out drunk. Uh, Kevin tries to take out his sword, and he, they, oh, the assassins come, Sherwin! I promise, I'll defend you with my life, but he's can barely hold it. It's Which like, sword is it? The not dark sword. Okay. There. <laughs> Gosh, I'm surprised he's able to take it out. Um, she's, uh, she's, uh, going to stop him, uh, because he's still laying there, yeah? Mm-hmm. So she's going to, uh, gently put her hand over his and just apply enough pressure to try and keep his hand down with the sword and she's going to start um, sort of patting his forehead and like gently combing her fingers through his hair in a soothing way don't you dare in a soothing way like she would her sick child when he's running a fever that's so nice that's so nice Kevin's gonna nod off and like pass out like immediately there there that's it. Just relax. Relax. Go to sleep. Shh. She looks, she looks over at Diaz and on her. And now, now I gotta listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your drum? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, break up, that, break up that other bottle. Oh. Yes, Ruben, what? How are you feeling? Is the pain still pretty bad? Yeah, it's not as bad as it was, but uh, I'm still feeling a little crampy and achy and kind of kind of chilly now. But um, I feel a little bit better. Okay, that's good. That's good. Well, let me know if you feel any worse, and then I will give you some more of this. All right? But for oh, right I feel now, worse. I feel worse. <laughs> <laughs> I feel horrible. I feel horrible. Right. right. Well, you're not going to feel right as rain after drinking. After drinking this. This is just something to help with the pain a little bit. All right? Okay. So you need to rest and just let your body naturally work this out of your system as best as it can. Uh, do you need me to help you get into the sleeping bag? There's one that's over Kevin right now. <laughs> you see over Kevin. Um, sh sure, yeah, I, I would appreciate that. All right, hold on one moment. I'll go get yours. She pushed it off to get the big bag. Okay, so you've got them in their sleeping bags, or at least asleep. Kevin's not in a sleeping bag, but it's on <laughs> uh, What are you doing from here? Don't hear you. After they're nicely uh, KO'd, she's going to then uh, look for Sid and Millie, um, for sure. Um, at least Sid to make sure that he knows what's going on with Deus and Kevin, because Sherbin doesn't know what Sid did to them at first, so she's shocked, shocked that they're not dead yet, completely. Okay, um, Tabi, if you're back, what are you doing? Um, I don't know, did we finish the no lift and all that? Yeah, it's the next day. Basically, we, we, we woke up, Millie uh, gave poison tea to um, Sherbin's eldest kid to deliver to Kevin, which he shared with Deus. So they're both healed because of Sid, but are very unhappy on the floor. Um, and that's pretty much all that's happened so far. There's a, a three-person manhunt for Millie right now. <laughs> so what would you like to do, Tommy? I don't know. If we're not really doing anything, I guess. Bobby's just hanging out. Okay. 
Sid and Sol. You guys have gone outside. As soon as you get outside, you see the roost where your ten falcons are tied up. Or should I say, uh, Corporal Worm Eater and his five <laughs> falcons are tied up. Um, there are a couple guards out here. You don't really see anything else going on. Uh, uh, excuse me. Yes? Wouldn't have happened to see a... Uh... Makote walk through here, would you? Over there. Mm. Rats. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't being secret up there. <laughs> Millie? How far out would the berry bush have been hidden? It's like, or... it's like a half a mile away. <laughs> nice. Then yeah, I guess she'd be walking back from that point. Sure. So you guys will meet each other, let's say, about halfway between, so you're like you're like a, a quarter of a mile away from the entrance at this point. <clears throat> no, so I can see what you're right. <laughs> Yep. Mm. <laughs> well, I am very glad to hear that. Did you know you almost killed Kevin and Deus? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear him? Oh, actually, no. Millie would have already been back inside to, from having seen that. Yeah. Yeah, you saw. So, well, okay, whatever. They find her somewhere inside. No, you. No, so then you wanted to no, go harder. You're, you're right. You're outside. right. So okay. you guys met halfway on the way. You, you harvested and then came back. Right, right. And you back then rip, that is my toes. First of all, your uh, little accomplice sold you out. You must have not given enough rock candy. <laughs> you got me. You got I just me. imagine her writing snitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sherman's about to only have two kids. <laughs> <laughs> stitches get stitches. <laughs> Next piece of rock candy is laced with the same stuff. Oh, <laughs> Breaking Bad style with the rice and poisoning. <clears throat> Good show. <clears throat> Millie. <laughs> A lot of things slide, Millie. And I look a lot, I look the other way on a lot of things. But we're in a situation right now where any of us could die at any minute. You poisoned two of our party members, your friends. I don't care how you feel about Kevin. <laughs> Why am I Captain Strange? <laughs> he, has, he has done nothing but try and protect you in his own way. And if I hadn't stumbled upon them, they would be dead. Not to mention the fact that you <clears throat> lured Sherbin's son into this. Good thing he didn't take a sip. <laughs> what was that? Good thing he didn't take a sip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sherbin's gonna be mad. <laughs> so, remember way back when, when I said that little things I could sweep under the rug, but the big things will really get you?
This is a big thing. <laughs> This was an always sunny episode, and you Millie poisons the gang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly you've got Ogdorell with the, uh, with the springboard going. Hey, <laughs> Sylvia! Wait, wait! No, it's Mila Zanjira! <laughs> That's not the point, Millie. They might not have been. No. Actually, we have internal damage. <laughs> you literally have internal organs. Yeah, damage. like, just saying. There's That's nothing like that. Like, uh, the game never addressed. It's like, oh, we can drink poison. Injuries. You're fine now. It's yeah. like, no, there was physical shit that would happen because of poison. I'm going to have to take a few restorations. <laughs> and I feel, I feel Don't like even bother. There is nothing that you could write there that is going to make this okay. Not any bit. Sad face. Sad face. You, Sad have face. you have got to get in there, apologize, and hope that A, they forgive you for this, and B, Sherbin doesn't kill you. <laughs> so, uh, when Millie responds to Sid, she, uh, hearing the tone in Sid's voice, just completely drops her normal smirking facade and just replies. What'd you say? Oh, it's okay. okay. No motion with the head. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you begin heading back, and uh, it must be cloudy because it's getting a little bit darker, like uh, sky wise. You're not seeing the sun as much. But uh, as you walk back, Wait, as, as in like weather darkness? Or... Yeah, the, like cloud pass overhead gotcha. toward the sun kind of thing. Um, and then the sun comes back, it's like must have passed. But when you get back towards the entrance to the cave, the guards aren't there anymore, and two of the birds are missing. Joyride. <laughs> Is it a uh, corporal worm? He's still there. Okay. Like the the birds that are still there look pretty freaked out. I look around, see if anything else is amiss. Uh, well, from the distance that you are, which is, uh, you know, a little bit away from the cave, not super far. Oh, no. Okay. You see what looks like blood um, around the entrance to the cave. And it looks like the the leashes that was holding two of the birds to the perch, they look like they were ripped apart, not loosened. Look up. <laughs> okay. High above you, you see something that's flapping wings, and it's gold, or it, it, it's like swirling greens and yellows. And as you look up, a piece of one of the falcon legs is falling to the ground and hits it, hits next to you. Get in the cave, get in the cave, get the birds, and get in the cave. The birds are like freaking out. <laughs> Wait, is Fai still alive? That's my bird. I just named it. Sure. Yes. It was a big bird. So the bird, the birds are tethered to the roost at the moment. You're gonna take the time to loosen them and get them in the cave. Melio is gonna cut the tethers and then tell them to get in the cave. Okay. Um, roll initiative for me. You too, Po. And Soul also, but you're not there. Almost natural twenty. <clears throat> Thirteen. Yeah. Fifteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. That was caught. You're not there. That was no. He rolled a thirteen, not a fifteen. Said so rolled a thirteen. Also, both thirteen. You both got thirteen. Yeah. So you're not certain that it's noticed you yet. It seems to be enjoying its meal. Um, and you run over to the birds and you just slice the slice the leather straps. Okay. 
So the birds then go inside, but you do notice that Quetzalcoatl, which is directly above you, is looking down now at you. It's like its mouth is covered in blood. Gross. And as the birds streak it, like run into the cave as fast as possible, it begins to dive bomb towards you. How far up is it? Maybe 500 foams. And all the birds are inside already, or heading inside? They've run inside at this point. Well, then Millie will grab Sid's hand and pull him towards the cave. Okay. Yeah, Sid, you would have seen this too. And mm -hmm. so would Sol. Oh, right. Sol was there too. Yeah. Um, all right. So you all run back into the cave? Uh, yeah. Okay. As you get into the cave, and you look behind you, like, no more than five seconds before you get inside, you see it dive bomb into the lip of the side of the cliff and just, like, destroy the rocks that were covering the entrance from below. And it comes back up and just kind of... Whoosh, whoosh, just hovering in front of the cave. And you see it charging up. It looks like some kind of ele electric something or other from its mouth. And it's aiming it at the, at the cave. Immediately throw up a wall of stone and block off the cave entrance. Nice. Hold on. All right. Stone appears, blocks off the cave entrance, and just as you do, as you see the stone assembling itself in front of you, you see a beam of electricity just come from Quetzalcoatl straight towards the entrance to the cave, and it hits your wall of stone, which you can feel is falling apart from it, but it successfully blocks the blast. And that's where we'll pick up next week. No! <laughs> week after next. Week, week after, after next. next, yes. Yeah, that was fun. Oof. That was interesting session. Yeah. Well, Kevin and uh, the X are not going to be... We'll be out this fight, FYI. Just this fight. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, we're, I wonder why that is. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Millie. Yeah. Really funny, though. It was really funny, honestly. It was really fun. <laughs> I mean, awful. But again, I can't get mad. Kevin does really stupid things, too, so. Yeah. I'm glad we're playing our characters. All right, well, thanks for playing, everybody. Oh, yeah, Millie's going to get such an earful. <laughs> but, you know, I actually don't think about how Kevin's going to react. I really don't know. Like, he's going to think so, because, like, he's going to think it's really funny, because pranks are funny. Well, hold on. Nobody told you it was Millie, did they? Wow. Well, I mean, I feel like word will get around eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like... Eight-year-olds don't funny. keep yeah. secrets. Yeah, Sherbin uh, strongly hinted that it was Millie. Yeah. He's probably going to be okay with it. I don't know. I wonder what's going to happen to the inner party dynamic now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to think about it. I really don't know how a conservative would react like... Oh, they like, they like you Josh your kids. Around. It's only manslaughter. It's not yeah, murder. I mean... Yeah, but see, so I thought about that too. Because Millie really is the youngest, <laughs> but I don't consider her a child. Like, I consider her, like, young adult. Like, you know, like, uh, yeah, like uh, a senior in high school. And, you know, I'm a. Well, and Kevin is also sweeter to his daughter than he is to his son. Yeah. So I don't know. I gotta figure it out. I, have no, I still have no clue how I'm gonna. How I'm gonna well, you got two weeks to think. Yeah, I really got to think about it. <laughs> All right, uh, so Jesse, you have, you have two weeks to per, uh, prepare the lecture that uh, Sherman's going to give Millie. <laughs> oh, you think it's a lecture? That's cute. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think they get to get get to some of the stuff that I thought was going to be fun, like Sid approaching the husbands or vice versa. <laughs> Well, see, now they can have a bonding experience of all collectively chewing out Millie for bringing the kid into the mix while Sherman's beating her not death. dying. <laughs> not dying <laughs> might be better. Yeah. Take this. Okay. Okay. Just one. Yeah, just one. Oh, just because, like, when people are show up. <clears throat> Thank you. And, uh... That was cool you to bring. Yeah, and then, uh... Potion. Yeah, it's in my bag already. And then, yeah, send me your address. Uh, and, uh, also go over to you guys. Yes, sure, it's going to take a little bit longer. No Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Good times tonight, good times. Yeah, fine. Uh, Adios. Yeah, good night. Well, I think more of it happened happen too, but then uh, we had I a nice, we had a fun deviation. Yeah. I did not expect the poison to be that strong. 
Um, I did because I knew that you were going to do something with it. <laughs> no, I hope. I hope Miller learns a lesson. Nope. No. <laughs> what's, your, what's your alignment? Chaotic. Uh, chaotic neutral. Yeah. I guess you wouldn't. The lesson is. <laughs> Give it to Kevin directly. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, yeah, because Kevin was totally taking it without a problem. But he still oh, has to test it first so that she doesn't get caught so easily. <laughs> no, what she should have done is poisoned more people so that there could have been uh, a better scapegoat. Deniability. <laughs> because it's like, oh, if it was just Kevin, then that paints her as a target. But it was like, oh, half the tribe was poisoned. It must have been a different tribe that did it. But even if you're chaotic neutral, don't you still have, like... Allegiances to not allegiances, but like feelings about your own group members. Yeah, neutral hurt. is basically it's like I'm selfish. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. Yep. Yeah, I know. But even like super selfish, unless you're playing it like completely just yeah, you don't care. But I I see it as playing a practical joke that you never had the chance to act or never had the inkling of inkling of actually growing up. It's like the forever a kid kind of mentality. You no, know, I agree. But I think also like the difference between not chaotic, that I don't speak for you. But. Chaotic neutral versus like chaotic evil would be like, I'm causing chaos and I don't care if I'm a psychopath. Versus I'm causing chaos, but I still, you know, I, I do well, care. I still have like a, some type of value system. Like I would say like a chaotic evil person in this instance would poison people, multiple people for just the fun, the fun of poisoning of people. Whereas yeah. this was specifically, I'm going to do something to Kevin because I have an opportunity and unfortunately... But you don't Deus feel bad about, like, Deus got... Millie's character doesn't feel bad about uh, Millie. Millie doesn't know that Deus... Like, Millie doesn't know the extent of the fuck. God, it got bad So she thinks it was like, oh, come on, everyone's overreacting. Like, they like, oh, it was like, oh, if she gave Deus a couple shots and she passed out. Got it, okay. Yeah, no, she really still, like, a good distance away. Yeah, so still doesn't understand, like, the breadth of, like, what actually happened. Eric, you still on? Yep. Uh, you. I'm leaving your box here. In case I, uh, you come here before. Put it. Here? It's your secret Santa thing from John, if that wasn't said yet. Yeah, no. <laughs> nope, it's just a box. Just a box? That's Hope you enjoy your box. <laughs> Empty cardboard box. Uh, Imagination. All right, y'all. Taking a week off? Or uh, uh, baseball. Oh, sick. It's a work uh, team building. Hi, oh, right, everyone. Yeah, so it's the twins are playing the Dodgers. Thank you. 